Yes, Johnny Cash doing uh, Personal Jesus by Depeche Mode. Good morning, everybody. I, I guess we do Personal Jesus because we had a nice discussion about Russell Brand's uh, documentary uh, last night with the director. And uh, Russell Brand uh, used to use that as his walk-on music. Uh, the, the original, not the Johnny Cash version. Right. So that's how we start today. Love Johnny Cash. Love him. And I, I thank Jim Norton for uh, you know turning me on to some of the deeper stuff from Johnny Cash back in the day. I just enjoy him. When you used to have that cassette. I think it was a cassette back then in your car with What's a that? whole bunch of uh, Johnny Cash songs when we would tool around a bit. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of that director last night, Justin? I thought she was great. We were trying to tell Jimmy about it a little bit. She was great. There's, a, there's a Russell Brand movie coming out, a documentary called The Second Coming. Yep. And uh, Russell Brand, it's an interesting story. He's not promoting this thing. And people are wondering, why isn't he promoting this movie? And she was kind of being nice about the whole thing last night, wasn't she? Yeah. But she kind of hinted, like, look, he he just bailed and doesn't want anything to do with my movie anymore. It sounded like that uh, the process of making the movie was a fist fight. But it, she knew it was going to be a fist fight going into it. Yeah, because he's he tends to be difficult at times. Right. He's an egomaniac. He's a narcissist. And he's also brilliant. Yeah. I've always loved uh, Russell Brand. And uh, the movie is really, really good. Yeah, and it's, and it's too bad that he's not... Out there promoting it whatsoever, he's uh, he's completely blowing it off. I, it's be, I think it's because it's so personal to him. Uh, the like the it doesn't make him look foolish or anything. It just makes him look human, and I think that's the part that he's having trouble with. But why not uh, look human? Because I think he had said to her, I don't remember if she mentioned this on the show or off, but like he already went through those tough things once. He doesn't want to look at them again. Right, but. I think it's very important considering where he's going with his life. Exactly. Because now he's getting into activism big time. Right. Yeah. And it shows like, yeah, I, I'm a human being. I'm flawed. Right. I thought uh, Hollywood would bring me happiness. I thought marrying a pop star would bring me happiness. I thought all the money I was making would bring me happiness. And in the end, it did not do that. That's right. And he's kind of blown off that whole world and, and has moved into like a lot of yoga and meditation. And he's got uh, gurus and whatnot. And he's trying to get things done in the world. Yeah. And uh, the director, Andy Timoner, is going to London right now for the premiere. And she's hoping that somehow he, he shows show up. up. Yeah, yeah she, she reached out up. to him. But. I don't think they've spoken since February. No, there's a great scene in this movie where Russell Brand's with his dad, and his dad is kind of one of these, uh, uh, kind of like one of these me, me, me type of guys. Uh, so there's no surprise why Russell Brand went into entertainment to try to get some attention. And Russell uh, Brand, I forgot the exact point he was making, but they're in a limo. And uh, Russell Brand is talking really very deeply. Uh, I, if you could uh, find, uh, help me out on, on what he was talking about. But he's really getting to getting into some deep concept and his dad's like wait is, is this the way to go what shouldn't we be and he's he's trying to figure out if they're heading in the right direction to where they were going that day and the look on russell brand's face just tells you everything you need to know as far as his relationship goes with his dad and then he tries again and his dad's like wait wait hold on russell what i i don't think this is the right way and russell just gives up and then his father tries to go back to the conversation and russell's just like forget it man you and know, his father's forget like forget it and his father's like stop moping around yeah then he yeah then his, the father calls him out for moping around right. like completely unaware that russell was making a pretty heavy point in that right. car or trying to right so and, and the uh director she only got to film Russell and the father for 10 minutes and got that scene yeah. because Russell Brand decided to punt. This is what she said off the air. Fuck it. Uh, Russell Brand decided to punish her that day for whatever reason. Uh, the, the, Russell was going to talk to his father for the first time in a long time. And she was all excited. Like, I'm going to get some great footage. And Russell goes, could you, uh, you know, could you be in the, you know, the follow car or whatever she called it? Yeah. So she had a, she had to follow them in another car without the cameras and without the crew as Russell Brand's talking talking to his father for the first time in a, in a while. And then finally he's like, "All right, you can come uh, in, you know, into this car with us." And uh, it, he only she only got like 10 minutes oh, wow. to yeah. try to film and get a little piece of the story there. Well, print, at least we got in a little while. Well, that's good. You know, yeah. they, she, they filmed all over Syria. So at least we got in the documentary. Yeah, I kind of uh, I, cool. I, I kind of um, called her out on that because they did film for this this film in in this studio. And I remember after that uh, Russell Brand and his crew was walking down the hall and he said, "Wow, that was really good. We're going to have to use some of that stuff and i got all excited like oh we're gonna be in a movie and uh no they they use some mal stuff with larry 
They used some Sway stuff. Yeah. And they used a town hall that Russell Brand did, all here at Sirius XM, and we did not make the final cut. And did he only did he do four things here at Sirius, and three of them made the film? I believe so. Yeah, maybe he did other interviews. I don't know. So eh, whatever, it's fine. It's still it's still a very good film. That's monumentally humiliating. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is. I mean, it's humiliating. It it did, is. She did say it was about the lighting in the room. Of course, she's gonna say she has to say something. <laughs> you, yeah, you can fix that in post. And then she was trying yeah, to say. Fix that in post. You can fix yeah, you lighting can. in you can, post. You can brighten it up in For post. the most part, you can. And then she said the angles were all wrong. You had a lot of people in here. I don't know. I, I think she was trying to be nice to us. Uh, but whatever. There's another scene in the, the movie where Russell Brand was doing some kind of uh, protesting in London uh, back a bunch of years ago. I don't, he wasn't that famous at this point. And uh, he got completely naked to make his point. And I thought that footage has been around for a while. She said, no, man, uh, as we were making this film, that footage popped up, and I wanted to use it in the film, and Russell Brand was begging her to not use that footage. Anything v deeply personal he wanted out of, this, out, of, out of this film. And she's like, it's too important. So she put it in the film, but she, you know, she cubed out his dick. Does he have a little dick? Uh, I don't know. She didn't say. I'm she surprised he doesn't want that in because he seems like a pretty open book. He talks about doing heroin and Dude, all that shit. Dude, they show it. He I mean, gave her footage of it. There's, there's footage, footage in the uh, in the film of him just doing heroin. Oh, okay. yeah, like a lot, like His many different ways. Used to tape him while he was getting high. Yeah, he's like in bathroom stalls and and in different areas, like lighting up yeah. tin foil and doing all kinds of drugs. But he has a problem with with uh, with standing on top of a van, waving a flag and getting naked, even though she she uh, blocked his. Penis. And even though it was a big deal. At the time and then there's another scene and then i can mo we can move on when he was promoting that book revolution they got footage of him uh in the bathroom at the view he wouldn't come out because he was really nervous and having having not whatever i don't know if it was anxiety a panic attack or something but he was getting himself together in the in the bathroom before going on the view and they show that in the movie and russell's wanted that out as well yeah and i'm thinking to myself well, it's great to see the you know the complete picture of who this person is yeah. scars and all yeah, I'd rather see that than just a fluff piece. Uh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. But it's 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 really a good film. It, 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 what proves it's a good film is that she didn't really uh, take everything out that he wanted. Well, yeah. she had full creative control. That was the only way she would do the movie. Which, uh, you know, pissed him off to the point where he... Uh, he has separated himself from the project. They went through five directors. He was a director at one point. Oliver Stone was a director at one point. The two guys who directed Finders Keepers. That's the movie uh, that, uh, about the guy and his leg. Yeah. And the one guy not giving his leg back to the, the original owner. And ultimately went Lost to her. in a plane crash. And the only way she would agree to do it is if she had full creative control. Yeah. And then there was another scene that she did take out. She was telling us behind the scenes where they go through... Um, uh, Katy Perry's closet and he's at this point in his life where he's like this is wasteful and what does this all mean and then he's going through her closet and seeing just all this stuff and basically saying wow you know what are we doing we don't need all this stuff as as people are you know starving around the world and whatnot so. there's a pretty good shot Pretty good scene where they're being interviewed, Russell and Katy Perry, and he's and he's talking about you know wanting to do wanting to do good, and we don't need all this stuff. We should change our ways. And she's like, well, I don't I don't want to I don't want to lose all this stuff. I like all this stuff. And then when the cameras go off, you see her like knocking the cameras yeah. and knocking like the lighting setup. And he's like, no, no, don't do that, don't do that. And then soon after, they split up. He texts her that that uh, that they're and supposedly uh, Russell told uh, the director that you know he didn't just text her to to split up the marriage, but she said last night that you know she didn't believe him that she really believes that he did just text her. But how did people not just idolize him? <laughs> he broke up with fucking Katy Perry by text. Yeah, that's pretty how amazing. is he not everybody's favorite comedian and <laughs> person? Exactly, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard. Exactly. The balls to fucking break up with her by text. Yeah. She's one of the biggest stars on earth, and he's just like, all right, I, I gotta, I, I have to end this, and then yeah. followed up with an LOLZ. <laughs> <laughs> fucking awesome. You love him now, right? Yeah. And then another. He's, but, a, he's an odd, odd bird, as they say. He, but he's. Do you a believe him? Guy. Yes. Do you believe that he wants to change and 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 he's he's not into all that money and uh, and fame and and all that and I think it's a combination. I think you get into it like yeah, I mean you want to be famous and you of course he does, but he's an ex dope addict and like you know he probably figures look I could be dead and here I am with all this shit and these people have nothing like yeah he probably has a conscience. 
And, and he knows uh, fame is fleeting, so you get the, the impression through this movie and talking to the director that he wants fame that goes on way past uh, uh, you're, you're gone from this planet. Right. Which, which happened to, obviously, Gandhi and, and, and the rest of them. So. Yeah, I don't know if he needs to worry about that. I mean, it, it's just like you, sometimes you want to make sure that you do what you're good at, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're a comedian, and that's what your thing is. And, that's, that's, and you can act. Mm -hmm. So do that and, and help people. There's no reason to not do both. You don't, have to, you don't have to make a decision where it's like, okay, I'm throwing this all out. Yeah. Because I want to... I mean, I would see it though because I do like him. It's a, and, and a, one other, oh one other thing that she had a forty five second montage of home movies with uh, Russell Brand and Katy Perry, and she's like, "This is great and really shows, you know, your your love for this woman." And he wanted that out as well. He's like, "I know how much I loved her. I don't need to you know show everybody else that." So he was he was pushing to get all that personal stuff cut out of a, a movie about his life. Documentaries are hard, though. I mean, my documentary maker has given me Wait, flack oh, you got stuff. A really? I didn't like know what? you were working on a documentary. Yeah, it, because I, I wanted to, like I told you, we talked about smiling the other day, and I wanted it to be just be Jimmy Smiles, where it's just footage of me smiling at people and making them feel joy. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yes, it is. How long is the film going to be? It has not been a, a lot of footage so far. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Just a couple minutes, yes, tops. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm asking if you can cut out all the scenes where I'm on like Craigslist and Backpage. Can you take all those hours wasted of me alone in my fucking apartment, just edging by myself, wondering what happened at age 47? Oh, wow. All right. Maybe you could slow slow mo the footage to make it, you know, stretch it out. Stretch out those smiles. Out yeah, those Jimmy smile. smiles. Uh, what happened in Monday Night Football? Did you guys see it? I, I did not, because no. after the show last night, I went home and crashed. I was in karate class. You were in karate class? Yeah. 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 I teach one. You teach karate? I do. What is going on? I've been teaching karate on Mondays for years. What, what kind of karate? <laughs> Just basically show up, fucking chopping and stuff. But I mean, are you following some, hey, look, some discipline? Chopping? Or? Is chopping, yeah. So karate is your. Is it called chop just again. chopping and stuff? I it's love the uh, karate. inside Cho technical terms. Yeah. I think you should call it chopping and stuff with Jim Norton. <laughs> chopping and stuff. <laughs> chopping and stuff. Monday nights with Jim Norton. Yeah. Um, well, they also have. Do you have belts? On. What's that? Do you have special belts in your karate class? Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, yes. It, it, but they're all around the rafter for the fucking teacher. <laughs> 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 Sees the writing on the wall. <laughs> what happened on Monday Night Football? Uh, so that was a the, bad call by the old ref. Yeah. This is the end of the game, and uh, Detroit's down by three, and they're driving. I'll show the play first, and then I guess we can talk uh, about it. Detroit's uh, driving with, uh, okay. Third and one, 151. Plenty of time in the fourth quarter. Hey, why yeah. don't you call this? Jimmy, uh, how many timeouts? Uh, looks like uh, the defense is <laughs> right there, ready to go, and uh, they're going to hut, hut, hike the ball. And there he is. He's back to pass. He throws. It's caught. And he's driving in. Oh, and he fumbles oh. in the end zone. It's knocked out of bounds by one of the goddamn cocksucking Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> ah, that birdie flew. Well, um, moments ago, you said, do what you're good at. I think you should leave comedy to go into sports casting. Thank you. I should get into comedy. <laughs> That's fucking irrelevant. But um, what, what happened? Did he actually cross the goal, or are they saying that by hitting it out of the end zone, it was a... Uh... Well, there's a lot going on here. I don't oh. think he crossed the goal, right? He did not cross the All goal. All right, but... No, it's didn't. illegal to hit it out of the end zone. I know that much. Right. So he fumbled before he, he crossed the goal line. So, so that guy was acting like it was a touchback almost. If Yeah, had, had he fallen on the ball, it would have been a touchback. So the but it, he, it you're out. not allowed to bat it out of the back of the end zone. So according to the rules, uh, Detroit should have gotten the ball back at the at the one-yard one line. Yard at line. the one-yard line, really? Yeah. See, how does now the ref blows that. That's a blown call. How the fuck does that work against the team? That should be a, like... Right. That's a major mistake by the entire officiating team. That's right. Couldn't they uh, call New York or whatever they do? It is not a reviewable foul. Well, that's stupid. You got the video cameras. Everything should be uh, reviewable. Did the refs know something happened or no? I think they, they got together to discuss it, but there's nothing that they could do because it's a judgment call as the play is happening. Hmm. They have to judge whether or not it was purposely batted out of the end zone. Well, so why can't they review that? I mean, that's, that's just it's a scoring rule. play. You know this time next year they'll be allowed to. Yeah, of course. And this stuff always happens to the Lions. Like, there was, there was some play with the same receiver. Oh, he fumbled it, idiot. Right on the, like, half-yard line. But yeah. there was the same play a couple years ago where uh, Johnson had caught the ball for a game-winning touchdown, I think, against the Bears. But then when he got to the ground, like he had possession of it, and then when he got to the ground, it came out. Yeah. And they said because he couldn't make a football move, 
that was a fumble. Yeah. And then they overturned that the next year. So they always get screwed on this. Ah, uh, who knows? That's so stupid. When it's, it's not reviewable when you have all the cameras and everyone at home is going, my God, they blew this call. Yeah. That's not, that just, it's just not fair. And he absolutely tapped the ball out of the back of the end zone. Yes, he did. So what are the, uh, I think the Lions are now 0 and 4 then, huh? That's correct. And, uh, Seahawks, where are they at? 2 and 2. They're 2 and 2 now. Okay. And that's how it ended last night. Wow. 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 Look at that. And tap. Oh, yeah, he knocked it out, obviously. He absolutely did. I saw a good documentary last night, too. You I did? was trying to avoid jerking off for hours. <laughs> so I watched this Whitey Bulger documentary on Netflix. It's fucking excellent. Is really? It? Wow, Whitey Bulger didn't play games. What, what is it called? What's it called? I don't remember. Um, it's about an hour and 45 minutes, though. It's a really long one. It's about the trial of Whitey Bulger. It's, it goes into after they caught him, and they interview uh, at least one of his old uh, guys, and uh, there's some real... They were, they were a fucking rough group of people, man. I can imagine. Fucking Bulger gang. It says he killed that, like 19 people. He was, he was a bad guy. Was it a, a Whitey, United States of America versus James J. Bulger? Yes, I would just recommend that. I'm not, I, I was, no one else saw it, so I'm not going to babble about it. But I, I would say just watch that on Netflix. It's called Whitey. Really good. Absolutely. Really good. I, I didn't know much about him other than the fact that he was just a, a gangster. Yeah. Oof. He didn't play games. No, no, they didn't. And there's one of his hitmen is on the stand. He was a guy they featured on 60 Minutes, who I would love to interview, although I don't know if he does press. Um, he might be the guy who killed 20 people and only did 12 years. Wow. He, he cut a deal. And uh, he did 12 years for fucking 20 murders. Wow. So people think that was a terrible deal by the government. Where's that guy now? He's around. I mean, a good, good, I'm sure you know he's pretty much got the, you know, what are you guys going to do about it attitude. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Very, very correct. He's got a hell of a story to tell. Yeah, but no, I'm sure no one fucks with him. He's like Sammy the Bull. You sure. Know? It's like you, you kill too many people for anyone to go after you. Oh, wow. Yeah, very I, good. I look forward to to seeing that. Definitely. Did you see the the other Whitey Bulger movie? The uh... no, I don't want to see with Johnny Depp. Yeah, no, no. I, no I, his I makeup looks yeah, horrendous. The makeup that. looks looks crazy. Looks I, so it's stupid. Very distracting. It was a Goodfellas rip off. The uh, the scene that they show. Wait, wait. I'm kidding with you. Where he's, he's, he's really? Yes, they show that scene. It reminded me of Pesci and Goodfellas. Yeah. Like, what are they doing? Yeah, they're. That's too famous a scene to steal from. Yeah. They're they're hamming it up a little bit. Yeah, so I have no desire. The clips to see I've black seen, mass or black masses. Yeah, yeah. Black mass. The clips I've seen, Johnny Depp's uh, makeup just takes you right the hell out of yeah, it. Yeah, takes you out of the film. Actually, wow, the documentary you saw was directed by Joe Berlinger. He, so he he did Brothers Keeper. Oh, okay. He did He's, the West Memphis documentary. He did the West oh, Memphis. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. We just certainly know him. Yeah. Yeah. He came in with um, Jason. Yeah. They, he was great. Yeah. I liked him a lot. A uh, lot of news, my goodness. You hear about the uh, the pilot that died Yeah, yeah. on American Airlines? <laughs> did I hear about it? I filmed a few. <laughs> um, yes, I did. <laughs> Where were they going? <laughs> so uh, I don't know. They out of Boston, was it? They were to Syracuse, Syracuse, I think. Yeah, they, they landed in Syracuse, but a pilot dies during flight from Phoenix to Boston. American Airlines, yeah. He's had a heart attack, stroke, whatever. Well, I mean... <sighs> That's why there's two, but that's why there's two of them. But look, <laughs> but here's my point. The guy, I mean, they, they start in Phoenix. They're going to Boston. The guy dies. Syracuse really isn't that far from Boston. Oh, guy, I know. Why wouldn't you just say, look, there's really nothing we could do. We might as well not inconvenient the, uh, the passengers and let's get everyone to Boston to he figure this he out. He might have still been hanging in there. You think? He, yeah, he might have still been alive. It's got to be just protocol. Look, you one guy's down. We you oh got to land immediately. Yeah, you don't wait to get to Boston. Doesn't matter. You're a few hundred miles away at this point. You know, get that plane down. An American Airlines uh, pilot died during a flight, like I said, from Phoenix to Boston Monday, leaving his co-pilot to make an emergency landing in Syracuse. Only after the passengers boarded another Boston-bound plane with a replacement crew did they learn of their fallen pilot. Well, what do they think? Like, hold on. The, the, but in order, like he he was concerned. When he landed, he said, can we get medical people right to the plane? And they said, yes, we will. So he pulls up to the gate. I'm guessing they rush on and take the pilot off. I'm sure they didn't let the passengers off while the pilot was fucking, you know, yeah, on the floor in the cockpit. They probably held everybody. Yeah. So they must have seen him carted out. Right. Unless he was able oh, man. to walk out or come out in a wheelchair. No, somebody saw him. I read the article that I read said that a passenger like saw him slumped over like uh, his console. So was he dead? Yeah, I think, yeah. I'm pretty sure he was dead, like, as the plane was in uh, the air. Yeah. So did they leave him on there while the passengers got off? I don't know. I doubt it. 
Uh, I would assume that they would take him off first. I would hope so. So yeah. maybe they didn't know he was actually dead until... He was pronounced dead in the cockpit at oh. 7.13 a.m. shortly after the Syracuse landing. On a recording from the airport tower, an officer is heard calmly declaring a medical emergency. Captain is in ca uh, incapacity. Capacity, yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, his death does not appear to be suspicious. No, he probably just, uh, I don't know how old the guy was. Gotta think heart attack. Heart attack or stroke. Seven years old. Or stroke. Those are the two. Or maybe he finally realized how high up he was and he just got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the cloud. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. That's uh, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> yep, that's why they have two, and that's why there's that system with the fucking flight attendants where one takes a shit, and the flight attendant will go in yeah. with the other one, so that if that happens, she can open the door. I love the flight attendant that's uh, keeping guard. Yeah. Keeping guard with the, the yeah. snack tray. Yeah, a little snack tray blocking your way. I always like roll my eyes like, really? Yeah. What are you going to do if, if there is some crazy person on this flight right now? They will delay you just enough for them to get in the cockpit. That's all they're there for. The United used to have these things that would pull across. It almost looked like, uh, you know, those like those those folding doors that like where you the they accordion open mm -hmm. and close. Yeah, sure. It looked like that, but it was see through with wires. Uh, it was like you're being fenced in like cattle. Yeah. But it would delay you just enough where they could cut the pilot, the captain could get either into the bathroom to safety or into the cockpit. So yeah, I, they they put that cart there just to stop you for five seconds. I always hate when one of the pilots, you know, leaves to go to the bathroom. You I get don't nervous? Know. Yeah, a little bit. I'm like, oh, will you just get back in there, please? <laughs> I hate when I have to go to the bathroom and the fucking pilots stand there yapping with the flight attendants because they have that cart there. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I want to say to them, so I'm a first class passenger. <laughs> 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 and where's my warm chocolate chip cookie? It bothers me that I can't go up there and just fucking take a leak because he's fucking yapping. This is not a social club shit. Dick. Get in there. <laughs> yeah. Fly the fucking silver airship. <laughs> get creep. Get me home. Yeah. Why are you uh, highlighting this story? In 2009, a Continental Airlines jetliner carrier. 247 passengers landed safely at Newark Liberty International Airport after the 60-year-old captain died of a heart attack. The plane was on autopilot when he died. His co-pilots quickly seized the controls and landed the plane safely. Only two months before that episode, a passenger landed a privately operated twin-engine plane at Southwest Florida International Airport in Fort Myers when the pilot died after takeoff. The passenger, who had uh, training as a pilot, saved four lives wow. in January. So this is a whole list of other uh, incidences. I yeah, finally it does figured out this article. In January <laughs> 2007, a pilot of... A what do you think, was a bed week somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> they, they all ate in the same restaurant. <laughs> Uh, 2007, a pilot of a Continental 757 bound from Houston to uh, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, with 210 passengers on board, died after takeoff. The flight landed safely after being diverted. So this uh, this tends to happen from time to time. Sure. These guys are, uh, you know, a lot of them are probably a little older. The military guys, they flew it in Vietnam or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're in 50s, 60s. Right. Maybe they don't have the best eating habits. They're always on the road. Mm -hmm. Can't eat well on the road. You've told us that. It's very hard. I mean, it's harder. I, I imagine these guys are used to it, but it's fucking rough. You're running in and out of... You know, you probably don't get the proper sleep either. A lot of them drink. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're fucking probably straining yourself. Yeah. Imagine having to get up every morning and go eight hours on a fucking plane, even though you're flying it. Yeah. And you got to get there early and get, what, just flip on all the switches and check the dumb plane and walk out in the rain and do the visual check yeah. of the aircraft. <laughs> then everybody gets off and you can't even get off in fucking Honolulu because you have to sit there and wind that <laughs> fucking thing down. <laughs> By the time you get to the fucking hotel, it's late. All the passengers are frolicking. You have to sleep for eight hours, then come back to the <laughs> shitty airport. Oh, it sucks. Even worse, you don't even get to enjoy the Honolulu air because you're you're waiting to bring uh, the, the the people back. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. You, you know. You don't even get the layover where you can maybe get some fresh air. No. We have zero footage for the Jimmy Smiles movie, by the way. Well, no, I know. There's none of it's released yet. No, but I'm saying that you... No, we're, we're rolling. We, we got a three-camera shoot. He's not shoot. smiling. We're he's, waiting. He's It'll happen. Up. Yeah, but I'm on a ham. He's, a, he's on guard he's right up. now. He's on guard. We got to let him uh, right. relax a little bit, and then we'll get some. We'll get some smiles. Smile there. and the world smiles with you. I said that one time, and somebody heard me, and they fucking ran with it. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. You smile, and the world does smile with you. Uh, it's nice. Always, when you talk to some of these people that work for the airlines, and you're, you know, they're, you're landing in uh, the Caribbean or whatever, and you ask them, and they're like, no, I'll be uh, in my bed tonight in New Jersey, oh. and you feel bad for them. Because it's just beautiful down there, and you're ready to start your week vacation. And they, you, you find out they go to these gorgeous places and don't really get to even step off the freaking plane and go all the way back to, 
you know, uh, New Jersey in the winter. I'm guessing they get layovers in cool places. Like you, you hear From the flight to time. Yeah, this girl I know is a flight attendant, and uh, you know she says like sometimes you get to go to really awesome places and you spend a few days there and come back. Like there's huge advantages to it, but yeah. This is a lot of times you're probably in and out, and you know the, where you are. The location means nothing. It's just your run. Yeah, but they give them a certain amount of hours. They have to sleep and all that shit. Like if you go to Japan, there's no way you're oh, yeah, right back around. Yeah. I hope you get to spend a day or two, but probably not. It's probably eight to twelve hours, and you're right back on. That's it. The so. crew became illegal. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> That's the fucking worst, man. When you're waiting to take off, and the crew becomes illegal because of the the, the timing, and yeah. you have to wait for a whole nother crew. Oh, it just sucks. You would rather have a tired crew, wouldn't you? A Totally. Yeah. I'd rather have fucking an Al Qaeda crew. They said no, we're taking off. <laughs> They're trying to like keep you safe, but you know we're just humans in general. We're just so selfish, and we're like, I don't, you know, I'd rather have a tired crew, a yeah. zombie crew. Yeah. How about the stewardesses that you can tell they're really tired and their hair is just all fucking messy and you just know they need sleep desperately, so they're not an illegal crew yet, but they're right on the border? Yeah, well, you know, that they just had to fucking do what they, like, they've been out the night before. There's a lot of times that they, I heard a guy, a speaker one time in a meeting years ago, talk about how there's a, a, an epidemic of alcoholic pilots because oh, he was yeah. a recovering pilot. And so I guess a lot of them fucking go to the hotel bar and get fucked up. And all those hot flight attendants, you know, the, 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 Captains and co-captains have to be trying to fuck them. They have to be. Yeah. Once in a while, there's no way they don't. Some handsome guy. Yeah. You know, he's fucking forty years old. He's a pilot. Yeah. You know what are her options? All these frumps on the plane. <laughs> Another guy in coach in a bad Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's gonna fuck the pilot. So she, these guys probably hook up all the time. She has urges too. Of course she does. I, I caddied for a uh, a pilot for a huge airline back in the day, and he was Lufthansa. He was uh, <laughs> he was a notorious drunk. Really, Notor this guy drank, and you, you just hoped he he just enjoyed drinking on the golf course, and that was it. But there's no there's no way this guy must have been drinking all the time and flying. Well, maybe never had a, never had a problem though. I mean, you know, he he lived a nice long life. Did he have me? You never know what happened to him. He might have just drank one fucking little shot, uh, a little airplane bottle full of liquor one time, and then had a problem on the plane and flown it upside down, <laughs> and then landed it, and then gotten blamed for the crash. But then he would have said, I'm the only one that could have done this. It had nothing to do with the liquor. Right. But then some crack detective would have found the bottle inside the uh, garbage, yeah. and uh, they were going to blame the stewardess, who he was fucking on the side, of course. <laughs> and he had a moment of conscience in front of all the cameras and broke down and told the truth. And then his son asked him a meaningless question. Who are you? And the movie ended, and you wanted to hang yourself. It was like, this is it. This fucking way they left me. What's the worst part that he flew the plane upside down? It just, <laughs> you know, it was actually some of it was really good, but it, it, the fact I like Don Cheadle in that movie, but the fact that he flew the plane upside down really annoyed me. Um, they didn't have to do that. No, of course they didn't. It, it, just a plane crash is interesting enough. Of course. But then they had the, the the whole him breaking. It just annoyed me. His big speech at the end I was like, oh. Yeah. But I guess it's a movie, so whatever. But yeah. you know, what was it called again? I don't know. Uh, oh, dang. And everyone's they blamed him when it was really the plane. Holy shit! Everyone's equipment. Everyone's screaming at us right now. Flight. No. Yes. yes. Flight. I think so. Oh, all right. Speaking of drinking, Cece. Yeah, Cece Sabathia. Oh wow! How He's, bad must it be to check yourself in a rehab like right before the playoffs? Yeah, the Yankees uh, pitcher obviously he uh, checked himself into rehab. It turned out he stayed in Baltimore and got really uh, wasted in a Baltimore hotel. And then he realized, oh my God, I need help. Well, was he was he supposed to fly out and he stayed instead? Uh, let's see. A weekend long bender during a Baltimore road trip. His drinking got really bad this weekend, and it put him in a really bad place. At a source close wow. to the team, he was afraid. He felt that if I don't do this now and go into rehab, I don't know what is going to happen. Yeah, maybe because he, he felt if he would have detoxed, he might have had a bad problem and he couldn't have pitched anyway. Yeah, the last straw for Sabathia came during the team's final regular season series in Baltimore, where he spent most of his time pounding drinks at a hotel. Just before the playoffs, he checks into rehab. Yeah, it's bad timing. They say he wasn't having a great year, but still. I think he was. Uh, he turned it around a little bit oh. later in the year. He probably started drinking. The little I know about baseball, <laughs> I believe that's what happened. He had a better second half than the first. Yeah. Half. Did he? Yeah. Uh, did you see the picture they, they showed? Front page of the paper? 
Uh, and I see him pouring champagne over his head. See on the rocks on the post. On the rocks, and it just shows him pouring champagne over his head. Yeah, he looks fucked up, and it's just the face that he's making. It looks like he's fucking loaded. They didn't need to do that. To, to, they had to find the champagne picture to yeah. really push the story forward. CC on the rocks. It's kind of funny though. You yeah. Know. Oh well. Yank, Yank star in rehab for booze. I haven't followed baseball in so long, so I don't know if that means anything to them or if they're gonna fucking now eat shit without him. I mean. They're only guaranteed one game right now, so they're, what, in, the, they're in the wild card game. Oh, God. the phone's ringing. Tra- yeah, who's I, on the I, phone? It's Roland. I, I, They'll get it. Roland is calling. It. No, let's see what happens. Yeah, Roland calls if he needs the intern or if he you put know, him on speaker. Say guest is here. Who do you need the intern for? To get our guest something to eat or drink. So why doesn't he just uh, go get the intern? Because the intern's back here answering the phones. So why is he just coming? Clearly in? not answering the phones. Super easy to just call and say hey. Okay. Can you send the intern back? He, 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 uh, is, our, is our guest here? I don't know. I didn't answer the phone. I was well, talking to you. Well, the intern is back there. <laughs> Should have answered what the phone. Want? He wants me to come down there, presumably for food. Yeah, he wants he wants the intern <laughs> to come down for food. What okay. do you mean for food? <laughs> is it for the guest? No, I don't know. It's for him. <laughs> you think it's for him? Yes, it is. I don't know. He's answering phones. He can't. He's busy. The phone's See? ringing phone's again. Ringing. Who is calling. that? Get the phone. I'm really hey. hungry. Super hungry. Hey, let's hear him answer the phone. Yeah. I'm hungry. I want bacon and blueberries. I'm hungry. <laughs> I want bacon and blueberries. <laughs> blueberries. Oh, oh my god. god. I bet you right now his toilet just heard that. And <laughs> trying to commit suicide. <laughs> Got up and ran away. Is there a worse item in the universe than being his toilet? <laughs> oh. oh no, he's getting bacon and blueberries again. They'll never get the stains out of me. He, he was trying to tell us last night he was eating healthy. He was having what a strawberry bowl? Yeah, a strawberry bowl, which was like From Jamba Juice. Yeah, I can't imagine that. Could you look that I up? I am. Just eat the strawberries. But it was like it was like a. I don't even care if you eat shitty, but don't try to tell me you're eating healthy. It was I had like breakfast. a strawberry sugary mix with like the sugary granola in there and a big bowl. Of yeah, it. we didn't ask, by the way. He, we had, he offered uh, that up. We had breakfast the other day after he was dropping our books off. I was already walking. I saw Roland in the street. We had a, a lovely little meal. He's awesome. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. He's, he was <laughs> tolerable. And, and he had no jacket on, even though no, he's in it, shorts. It was kind of cold. It was cold, but... and he's in fucking shorts he last never, weekend. He never wears a jacket. Oh, no, I know. I know. Oh, I know. Even in the winter, he'll show up to work with a t-shirt and, and shorts, basketball shorts. I envy that. I have the information on the chunky strawberry bowl. Okay, and, and like I said, that I looks good, man. I don't give a fuck. But when he, you know, looks at us and says he's eating healthy, then uh, your eyebrows go up. Go ahead, there, Eric. So it contains uh, soy milk, frozen strawberries, bananas, Greek yogurt, bana- more bananas, uh, pumpkin flaxseed. Granola. granola peanut butter. That sounds delicious. Yeah, it sounds awesome. It does. I would good. love to have that. 17 grams of fat. Okay. 53 grams of sugar. Oh, that's just too much. Let's talk about sugar for a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> that's way too much. <laughs> that's uh, twice your allotment of sugar for one day. Oh, goodness I, I, gracious. I know now. I think you're only supposed to have about 28 grams oh, for the well, whole day. We don't know if he got the small or the large. He went large. So then it's 25 <laughs> grams of sugar and 50, uh, 20, 25 grams of fat, 55 grams of sugar. Oh, that's far too much for me. 670 calories. Oh, they're supposed to be healthy. Yeah. <laughs> what a sin. supposed to be healthy. I want to talk about his toilet more, actually. I, yeah. I agree this is boring, but uh, talking about Roland's toilet bowl is not. Just the first thing I thought of, bacon and blueberries. Like, what a fuck, what havoc that would wreak on your <laughs> oh <my> stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating healthy. I'm eating not healthy. Yeah, they're, just, they're just fighting it out in his gut. It's have some egg whites. Have some fucking egg whites. A nice egg white omelet with a little avocado on top is what I have. And then some blueberries on the side or some strawberries. They're starting to say you got to eat the yolks. They're not as bad as they... Uh... I like fucking telling them. <laughs> you get it? Yes! Tell Tell it. I got it. The jokes. Fuck yeah. Like, we, uh, you're killing it, Joe. Egg whites. Fuck yeah. Uh, I love my mother. I wish my mother liked egg whites. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of eggs does she like? She likes darker ones. Darker ones, Fuck huh? yeah. Scrambled eggs between my legs. <laughs> Ain't my mama pretty? Did <laughs> <laughs> we hear that when you were a kid? No. My friend Sean used to sing that. Ain't my mama pretty? She got meatballs on her titty. Scrambled eggs between her legs. Ain't my mama pretty? I don't know where he knew that from, but uh, it, it was uh, something that I've remembered since probably 1976. That's wonderful. Yeah, I my favorite I, song. Uh, uh, Roland? Yes, yes, yes. What's going on, buddy? Yeah, you know, a little breakfast here. Gets my energy up. Getting your energy up. Yeah. Are you really going to eat bacon and blueberries? Yeah, why not? And what happened to our omelet station we were going to set up for the gang? Oh, we're, it's, we're working on it for tomorrow. Yeah, for tomorrow. Wait, an omelet station? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to, like, uh, you know, fancy it up for a day. 
Get yes, everyone, uh, get everyone some nice breakfast in here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kind of like what we used to do at K Rock. Remember, Steve? Oh, oh I God, forgot all yeah. that. Oh, Jesus Christ! I I totally blocked that fucking shithole out. <laughs> totally forgot about K Rock. Yeah, the omelets were good. Yes, they were. Yeah. Totally forgot about that. Can we say um? Can we say Mima if we want to talk about a penis? <laughs> <laughs> can we say I touched my? <clears throat> We weren't allowed to even do that. No, anymore. no, not at all. If he's, if someone is, uh, if someone is uh, uh, Asian, are we allowed to say they were um, kind of white? How can we phrase that? <laughs> or we won't get dumped out of <laughs> fucking yuck. Oh wow! We I don't remember the uh, food. Though. I, I totally forgot. I remember, about we used to read the dump sheet every day. I used to love the dump sheet. I was because then we got to go over that. to satellite and we would uh, get the dump sheet, and then they wouldn't, they didn't want us doing that anymore, even though it wasn't even on their air. Yeah, they didn't care for us exposing what they were dumping because they didn't want us to strengthen the satellite audience. Yeah. I was fascinated by yes. that. I were you? Yeah, I couldn't believe the the stupid things they dumped out. Of. That was kind of fun in a weird way, calling them out and going, "Really, you dumped out of that?" Yeah. I, I wish I had an example, but I don't. And were I'm you reading? It, were you reading it for the first time? Like I've you got did. a bunch of them right here. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah, my email. I just Louis was the worst because Louis was so funny because he wouldn't curse, but he would just go like, "Yeah, I took a, a you know a diarrhea dump in her mouth." It was like, yeah, you can't say that. Just <laughs> yeah. didn't say shit. There were times <laughs> where like, oh, Louis. Yeah, we... No, Louis was legendary. He was the, the guy that got dumped more than anybody. Yeah. Him and Leary were the tight. Leary? Oh, yeah, yeah but Leary, yeah. I think Leary was just saying fuck, right? Like, Leary yeah. was just cursing. Louis was funny because he was using all these things that weren't curses. At, and I remember there was a time Louis was sort of trying to, and, yeah. and it, 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 it still was failing miserably. Yeah. I put my fist in her box. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> I can't say that. But I said box for pussy. <laughs> yeah. At one point, that would have been good. Like, I, back I in the a, old NEW days, that would have been great. I have a show where Louis was on. Okay. No, all right. Read the dumps. Let's hear it. So, okay. for the people, uh, we they're used to, almost all Louis. Okay, yeah. we used to do regular radio, and then we would move over to satellite. So, regular radio would dump yes. out of everything because they yes. have their rules that were way beyond the FCC rules, yes. by the way. And then satellite, you know, total freedom. So we got to read what they dumped out of that the regular radio audience didn't get to hear. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Eight oh seven, uh, Louis C.K. What if you have really sticky poo? <laughs> how is sticky poo? Like literally, but that that I agree with Louis on that one. How the how is sticky poo offensive on the radio? Who is offended when they hear sticky poo? The FCC will not find you for sticky poo. No. Who's offended by that? I got two uh, little kids. That's no. All, most of their dumps were just their rules. Yeah, that's all they talk about. My little kids is poo. Uh, one minute later, things come violently rocketing out of our asses. Louis C.K. It was the out of that was probably the problem. Yeah. We used to have problems like with that. Yeah, moment. something going in or out. Yeah. What else? Yeah. Uh, Louis C.K., uh, four minutes later, one bloody-eyed ghost. Louis C.K. in reference to a sheet that was used for sex. They dumped out of the sheet used for sex. He called it a bloody-eyed ghost, which is hilarious. That is a great line. Why would they fucking... And people wonder why it was hard to get ratings. Yeah. But then we still did okay. But, I mean, it, it's like that's we what you're dealing right. with. We didn't do great, but we did okay. So happy that medium is fucking choking itself. <laughs> it, it, it's in deep trouble. Deep, deep trouble. Uh, six minutes later, douchebag, Louis C.K. Okay. Uh, oh, eight, come on, he didn't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, faggot, Louis C.K. referencing Bob Travis. Kelly's Call of Duty uh, 4 team. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't me. I apologize. It just <laughs> flew out of my I, mouth. I, 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 uh, 840, Patrice O'Neill. Spick. Oh, yeah, nothing. Yeah, you can't say anything. 846. So, so, these guys didn't even understand what they, what they stuff. had that day. We're looking at a show where you have Louis yeah. C.K., Patrice O'Neill, and it looks like Bob Kelly, and, of course, Jim Norton. And Jerry Shepardini. It was all five of us riffing. And they're sitting there making sure that they, you know, chop the shit out of the show. Oh, God. Last one is Louis C.K. pissing away your brain. <laughs> so silly. Yeah. God, it makes me hate them all over again. I know. Fucking lawyer. I can still picture that mousy <laughs> douche lawyer and fucking rodent. We had a we had a big meeting with the lawyers, and I thought we were going to get things done. Oh, they, they hated they, me. They were strangling us, so I, I, I basically called the meeting. I'm like, we got to figure this out. And I'm like, it's not going to be good, but we'll try. So we walked, I, I remember, to the MTV building, and we had to meet with the lawyers, and we I thought we were going to try to figure out how to make this work. And then they gave us a whole speech for like a half hour to 40 minutes. I remember this like it was yesterday on why we can't do pretty much anything. And then I said, then why the fuck did you hire this radio show? What are you doing? So. And what'd they say? 
They went right back to why we can't do all this. And their reasoning was just stupid because I kept arguing the point that as long as uh, we're not getting in trouble with the FCC, it shouldn't matter to you guys. You know, this stuff is going to work. We know how to do radio, but you got to let us do it. Hmm. You can't tie our hands behind our backs and expect us to, to, to get the job done. Whatever. This is old news. I'm sorry. Yeah. How great is this? Air France execs run for their lives after they cut 2,900 jobs. Can we see that? Yeah. Didn't one of them get assaulted? There's crazy footage here. Oh, it's great. It takes a little while, but the payoff. Let's just zip up to it then. I, I really don't know this story. Air France cut like 2,900 jobs and people are not happy, I guess. I haven't seen it, but I heard. Okay. Well, uh, but why do they cut the jobs? Do they have a choice? I don't know. I imagine there's, they think... I'm sure there's always a choice. Yeah, they probably figure the executives are making way too much money and could have maybe oh, given I up see. some of their... Pa- I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, there's, rumors, some of their that, pa- there's yeah, rumors that ESPN's cutting hundreds of jobs soon, and they've got record profits, so I'm sure there's always a choice. All right. Let's... Yeah, it's about the people! Yeah, Travis doesn't trust the man. Well, when you're paying billions for NFL packages and you can't pay your employees... Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah. It's a bunch of bullshit. sugar, but, pardon my French. You know, was, um, just about every company doesn't take care of their employees at this point. It's unbelievable. All right, let's see this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, they are knocking wow. the fucking fence down. We'll, uh, we'll post this video on our stuff. Follow our stuff. <clears throat> and these are all... I love it. They're all standing in the lobby of a building with flags, and they are not happy. And are these executives being hustled out? Yes. Oh, it's great. Oh, that one guy's trying to get to him. Yeah. That's good. One guy's really aggressive. (laughs) Fucking fantastic. They're pushing and shoving as they're trying to get this executive out. Oh, look at how hateable looking is he. Then again, I don't know where the people making unreasonable demands. Uh, I don't know what the employees wanted. Maybe they wanted unreasonable shit. Yeah, I kind of want the ah, backstory. Suits all ripped. Good. <laughs> oh, that makes me happy. Yay. I wish there was a serious XM sign behind him. <laughs> good for the people. There's two really good things here. The people win now, on this one. Good for you. The, the, the executive, oh my God, his shirt is ripped his off, His shirt too. is ripped off. He's climbing a fence and the police have to aid. I'm so happy. Please fall. From the front, it looks like a normal sports jacket shirt. Oh. Analogous. They ripped their clothes ripped their off their clothes body. Off. This guy has absolutely no shirt on. He, he has, but he, he still has, has his tie on. around his neck. That's high awesome. And, and his sleeve. Yeah. This is awesome. The backs are written off, ripped off the clothes. One for the one for the people. I like that. That's I, awesome. I, I need to know the backstory though. I wish you could see that every day. I wonder why they got so mad that it got to that point. Yeah, obviously, I would like to know. Get, obviously, people get mad and companies get mad when uh, a whole bunch of people get let go at the same time. But this is way over the top, and I, so I, I just need to know some of the details. Yeah, well, I wanted to like to know maybe was, the, was, was there a union there being unreasonable, or was this just them being scumbag? Uh, yeah, well, what I don't we got? Know. Yeah, we'll have it in a second. We're looking up the story right now from the Guardian. Uh, what do you got, Eric? The, uh, striking staff was demonstrating. A hundred workers forced their way into a meeting. Uh, let's see what it's about. They stormed the headquarters near Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. It was condemned as scandalous. Uh, let's see. Tensions between management and workers. Look at this guy. He's completely... Francis lost making flagship carrier had been building over the weekend in the run-up to a meeting aimed at finalizing a controversial restructuring plan involving 2,900 redundancies between now and 2017. So they would lose 1,700 ground staff, 900 crew, 300 pilots. Don't, wow. Don't, 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 don't make me redundant. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't want to be redundant. I can't hear that word without thinking that. Of course uh, not. It's time to go through that show again. Please, don't make, don't make me redundant. <laughs> Every few years you got to do it. It's a good moment, though, right? Yeah. When, Very he, good. when he finally breaks down and begs yeah. for yeah. the job. It's, it's just one human moment. You realize he really wants to be there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I guess they... Uh, Wow, those were all, wouldn't that be great if those were all pilots that fucking ran after them? <laughs> These are the guys flying the planes. <laughs> you, Why not have to explain who the pilots were with my joke bomb? <laughs> <laughs> fucking faggot I am. Uh, several hundred airline employees had gathered to demonstrate outside Air France's head office, and members of senior management were greeted by an angry crowd shouting and waving flags. Were they coming to work or trying to leave? Uh, featuring the company chiefs, mug shots. As executives enter the uh, enter the building, they were co- coming to work. Dozens of workers forced their way into the committee room, shouting, "This is our home." Good for them. I think it was a meeting. Like they were both there 
to meet about this. Right, and try to figure something out, but there's nothing to figure out. They already made their uh, their decision. 2,900 redundancies. But then again, a company can't be paying for people that they don't need. I mean, that's also... Well... I just don't know enough about it, guys, obviously. And they're trying to phase it out kind of slowly. They said uh, that uh, through 2017. Oh, that's only two years. Ah, yeah, good for the people. You just know. We all know what executives are in the end. Yeah. The people have the power. But the people know. Oh, can we play that song? No. What? Nope. <laughs> Why not? Because we played it a lot. Oh, okay. People hated it. Hated what? The people have the power song. Remember we played it like every day for a week? I don't remember it. Maybe you weren't here. I, I got really obnoxious with that one. It started with Patty Smith, and we did many different versions of it. People have the I have no memory of that at all. Maybe I blocked it out like you, a childhood molestation. You, you, you probably should have blocked it out. It was uh, it was very douchey, and it pissed off a lot of people. Yeah, people were furious. Uh, we just posted the video up on our Twitter page, Opie and Jimmy. A lot of these videos we check out, we put up there for you, so you can find them nice and easy. All right. Uh, Sam Morell is here today. We have Joe Machi, who I like very much. Uh, Mackie? Oh, Ma I don't know how to say his last name. Is Joe Mackie? Mackie? Is it Mackie? Mackie. I, I know him, and I don't know how to say his last name. Yeah. First time on our show, Joe Mackey. Yeah. He's an odd little man. He, he's funny. Yes, he is. He's very funny. I, I enjoyed him on America's Got Talent. Was he on the last comic standing? Was it last comic standing? I'm trying yeah. to remember. Oh, yeah, it was last comic standing. I enjoyed him a lot. What happened to Jeslin? Like, he was going to come on. Is he, did he not come through yet? I don't think he's around yet. Oh, okay. Maybe next week or later this week. Yeah, Harry is really funny as the host. I, I haven't uh, watched it, but people were like, I haven't heard anyone talk about that show in a while, and they were all talking about how good Jeslinik was. Yeah. It's over. And how Norm, how, who was one of the hosts? Was Norm, Norm McDonald? Norm, Norm, they said Norm was great, Norm, too. Uh, didn't Roseanne, give a shit. And I want to say the older Wayans. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, that's right, Keenan, yeah. Yeah. Norm McDonald was hilarious, they were man. The three judges. I want to be a judge on that show. You I'm petitioning. Be. I'll be a judge. I'll be a good judge. You're a good judge. Where did you get that joke? <laughs> <laughs> you would be a wonderful judge. You would be. You would be perfect for No, I, I would have trouble being really mean to comics. I'm such a fucking Did, fruit. I, I mean, Norm was kind of direct, let's say, but uh, in general, they, the, they're not mean to the comics. Norm was very honest. Yeah, he was very direct and honest. You're absolutely yeah, right. Like, if he didn't like a joke, he would say, I didn't like that joke. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I would he do. He was fun to, to I'd watch. i try to be a curmudgeon. You turn into Chip. Chip yeah. would just be like... That was hilarious. <laughs> Follow you allowed to change it, though, and I just said Pecker at the end. That's just me. You're <laughs> fucking off the show. I would love to throw people off as Chip. If I could do it as Chip, fuck it, I would literally vote everybody off that dumb show. <laughs> I would just you, mess up the whole thing. Oh, so. Would Chip have, like, a tagline? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it would depend on the joke. But it would always be something stupid. No, but I mean, like, when somebody would get eliminated. Like, Donald Trump says you're fired. Oh! Oh, yeah, I don't know what he'd say. Yeah, it's a good would, I mean, like a, a catchphrase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would try. I think Chip <laughs> Chip would try to get a catchphrase. You're out of here! <laughs> it wouldn't catch on. Yeah, it's just baseball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out! <laughs> Can't say that. Well, you can clean it up a little bit. Maybe, yeah. Get the F out. Go fudge your mother! <laughs> dump, dump, dump. Can't say that. Uh, we're just waiting for our food. Should we break? I'm hungry. I'm very hungry. Yeah, but we like eating during the breaks because uh, the people have told us they hate when we eat on the air. They, they said they hate when we talk on the air, too. Well, that's true. <laughs> Good point. Uh, Donald Trump says Washington should keep team name controversy driven by unnecessary political correctness. He's taking a stand on that as well. Or well, a stance yeah, on that. I, I don't think that one's unnecessary. But whatever. We've talked about that. It's yeah. Well, what is he saying? Anything different than everybody else? Um, uh, let, let's hear Trump. Well, he settled to on play. Oh, he says as long as the team owner, Dan Snyder, wants to, they should be able to keep the name. Honestly, I don't, I don't think they should change the name unless the owner wanted to, Trump told the New York Times. Uh, Trump feels the, the, the debate surrounding the name is an issue of unnecessary political correctness. The Times wrote, and Trump said the name isn't considered a slur by everyone. I know Indians that are extremely proud of that name, Trump said. They think it's a positive. How many Indians do you think he hangs out with? <laughs> Has anyone ever seen Trump hanging out with a bunch of Indians? I've never noticed that. Never. I'll Google There's it. There's Facebook friends. Trump is a smart man because he just thinks everyone's terrific. Yeah. And he says it in such a... He's even told us we're terrific, and you, 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 it's easy to believe him when he says all that. Everyone is terrific in his eyes. Everyone. Yeah, unless you're a loser. 
But then, but he'll tell, he'll say they're terrific as well. Mm. He'll trash the hell out of a candidate, but then say how terrific they actually are as people. Right. How's Trump doing? Is he dropping still? Heard he's dropped a little bit in the polls. And people are like a little over it, I think. I can't find a single photo of him with an American Indian. Yeah, I've looked, believe me, I've looked for years. <laughs> <laughs> for years? It was your mission? Yeah, I wanted to find Trump in a Native American. Um, I figured it'd be a nice picture to have, to get framed and signed. But so far, nothing. Not not one picture where he's doing the. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I was just Yo, on a whoops. spiraling, bombing thought. I just wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't let it go. I was really racing down the old Bomaroo Hill. Wait, go back to that. What they're trying to make a. So it says uh, Trump just added another notch to his belt of anti Native American comments. This is from Think Progress. Ah. What did he say? I throw garbage on the road. I tell the garbage you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we should break, even though the phone's not here. Well, when will it be here? It's I don't know. Already. I don't see anyone uh, walking down the hall, so we'll break. We got Joe Mackey standing by with Sam Morell, and uh, we're looking forward to that. That's gonna be uh, that's gonna be great. Sam's a fucking funny guy. Really funny. Really weird, creepy eyes. Yeah. He's, he looks at you like the old Pope, like fucking Benedict. Yeah. That's what he reminds me of in the eyes. Even though his face doesn't look like it, he has Benedict eyes. He's got those creepy eyes. He just looks at you from the side. <laughs> you get the eyes of a stranger. Let's take a break. What is that? Is that a song? You got the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, a terrible song. You got the... Uh, I don't know why that just popped in my head. I apologize. I think it was from Valley Girl. Hmm. I think. Look it up. Oh, Why did that just pop in my head? Oh, my God. Just because you said eyes. That's so stupid. I'm trying to remember what band did, Eyes of a Stranger. The Payolas? Yes! The Payola. Oh, don't say that on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Play this. It? Play a, a little bit of the break. Uh, hang on. Legal? I got it. We got it. Okay. Fine. Oh, this is the new I think version? this was from Valley Girl. All right. I, I, I apologize. I don't even know why that popped in my head. Ugh, why couldn't the Dell computer have broken then? That's where it comes from. You sure know your late 70s Canadian <laughs> rock. <laughs> it's a Canadian band? Yeah, they're from Vancouver. <laughs> Do they ever have a follow-up hit to Eyes of a Stranger they were that was around, barely a hit? They were around for 10 years, and then they broke up yeah. uh, in 88, and then yeah. they came back for five years, like, last decade. Okay. and uh, was They that had, so like, two charting songs in the U.S. What? The, was the, that? The what? other one was... Uh, yeah. Dirty Water in 87? Not the Standells. They didn't do a cover of Dirty Water, did they? I don't know. Um, do I'm we... not looking it up. I mean, you're more of a Paola's guy than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just weird where some of these things come from all of a sudden, just popping in your head. It's dumb. Uh, was it in Valley Girl? I don't know. All right, why are we doing this? All right, Joe Mackey and Sam Morell. Huh? It's important stuff. It is important stuff. Let's get to the bottom of this. You ever been on the fence with blocking someone? Um, Do I block? Do I it's do? usually very obvious, I think. Every once in a while, you make a mistake, and they, and then uh, you unblock them. Why? It's just some jerk-off babbling about liberal agenda. Shut up. You're, you're, you and liberal uh, agenda? Just shut up. What's the liberal agenda? I don't know. Really? Don't, it's just exhausting, these fucking obsessed people. You're liberal agenda. Shut your face. I, I don't Can't stand them either. I don't think we have a liberal agenda Is here. the Redskins thing? Oh, I don't even know. Who knows? I just have no idea. Well, you are a libtard. Oh, uh, God, that fucking little catchphrase. The thick and blue liberals are just as awful. Both sides are awful. Yes. That's what the, the American people need to figure out on their own. Both sides suck. So stop saying your side's so great and the other, it's, and the other side is the problem. Oh, this guy. Oh, boy. I shouldn't have said that. I got both sides pissed off. Just a dope. Uh, we're going to break now. We will return. This is, I got a big tusk? <laughs> yes. tusk? Oh, yeah. Yes. I like this tusk. <laughs> we are back. This is the original version. Yes. Yeah, I ruined this for my fucking manager. I was so happy. Chip singing, I got a big tusk just like an elephant. And it's awesome. Your, your manager loves this song. Not, I fucking destroyed not anymore, it though. No. He hates it. No, his OCD won't allow him to enjoy it, and I'm so yeah. pleased. With that, we say good morning to Sam Morell hey, in studio. 
We love when Sam comes by. Thanks for having me. And for the first time, Joe Mackey. How Hi, you Joe. doing? What's going on, Joe? Oh, having a good day. Wish Sam wasn't on the show. He's not a talented person. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get some real accent here. Good boy, Joe. Why don't you start right out of the gun? Hey, <laughs> Sam. Mackey doesn't pull back. No, oh, he doesn't no. at all. He's a wild card. This guy's a smut peddler. <laughs> 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 Joe's a, a bit sweaty here. Well, you I get I, sweaty in the morning. Yeah. I, I walked from the bus station down here. I didn't yeah. trust the subway, and I. You Drinking this coffee, yeah. Well, why don't you trust the subway? Well, we, we, the public transport has broken my heart too many times. It's like a, it's like a beautiful girl in high school, you know. What? Did, well, you, guys, did you guys do good in high school? I didn't do good. No, I, I struck out horribly. Me too, horribly. Yeah. No, my my career started after high school. I, I bloomed after high school. Uh, but the sub, why did it let you down the subway? Well, the other day I was trying to get from the comedy cellar to another club, and I get there and the one train was supposed to come in five minutes. It passes us by with no explanation, and then it says 14 minutes for the next one. I had 40 minutes, so I had to pop out and get a cab. You just, if you can walk, just walk. You're, you'll get there. <laughs> you know, it's really all about this. How, well, how, uh, how um, far was the bus this morning? Uh, I come in from Jersey, and then, uh, and then I just, uh, you know, walk wherever I go, and unless you know, it's a, unless I got plenty of time that I can afford to delay, because yeah. no wonder people drive cars. Yeah, it's a little bit easier, but it's, but you make up for it in traffic. I mean, I lived in Jersey for years. Where you where you live in Jersey? Weehawken. Oh, all right. I was right outside Cliffside Park. Oh, cool. that's and pretty it's, close. Weehawken. Yeah, yeah, but that could be fucking still forty five minutes of traffic coming in How if you're driving. Take sticks. one of those ferries yeah. across. That's true. What six bucks? It is six bucks. You buy a month pass, you're good to go. I mean, it's about <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want to get into how cheap I am, but that that's. Are you a chiseler? Oh well, a little bit. Not like, not like this bastard over here. Well, you wanted to say Jew, and you held back. Well, you, really I, did. you really wanted to. I don't I want all this. It. I'm already going to get tweets about my voice. So, what's wrong with your voice? Well, a lot I'm of kidding. people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh well, that wasn't my expense. Hardy hard, hardy hard. hard. <laughs> well, so you're notorious uh, for being cheap. I don't like to open my wall unless I have to. Yeah. Yeah. Give us one example how cheap you are. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I, I we work this really good comedy club, and if you go in there, your drinks are free, so I get a coffee and a water because they give you a bottle. And I put that bottle in my backpack, boom, I got a water <laughs> for whenever I need it later. But the, the, I, get, I get my spot money in a free water. The, but water, wow. you could drink out of the faucet in New York. We well, got good the, water. You got the bottle, though. Plus, they guard their water at the restaurants here. You can't just go in there and... They do guard their water. Yeah, they guard their water in their bathrooms. You can't just go in there. California, and get... it's not like you have to ask yeah. for water now. So yeah, stupid. Situation. yeah well, no, I guess it's not stupid. They're they're pretty yeah. much uh, yeah, uh, very thirsty out there. Yeah, they're running out of water quickly. Are you cheap too, Sam? No, I'm kind of stupid with money. I'm the opposite. I think. Yeah, I, yeah. I just will like be like, yeah, take this. You know, I, I don't think about it. But... I find a happy balance between the guys. That's the interesting <laughs> part about me. <laughs> you ever try the city bikes? Instead of all this walking, Joe Mackey? Oh, hell no. You, you can't ride your bike on the sidewalks in the streets safely here in New York City. The taxi cabs are crazy. You got pedestrians jaywalking all over the place. Man, I don't understand this country because we got all this space. And, you know, we got pipes for water and wires for electricity. We build everything on this one island. You want to do anything, you got to go to New York or California. Let's put some good stuff in Pittsburgh or... Cleveland, you know, I don't, uh, I'm just off on a tangent. <laughs> I thought people would be like, yeah, why is it so yes. expensive? No, I, I tried to get a rally started for let's leave New York and go to Pittsburgh. <laughs> I still like to tour Pittsburgh and, and Cleveland, Cleveland at some point, Joe. So I'm not going to shit on our fans, <laughs> yeah. our two fans in and, Cleveland. And you didn't really go that far west. You should go further west yeah. with your concept. Columbus. Columbus. Yeah. I got near attacked in Cleveland like two years ago. Why? I was, well, I was, uh... I was trying to hook up with a girl after a show in Cleveland, and she was with a guy friend who was like creepy as hell. Oh, of course. And he was like, he was in the friend zone, and he was like kind of taking that on me. And when he went to the bathroom, we just the girl and I just left the bar. And th my stupid escape plan, I went to the bar next door, and he, I was drunk. I wasn't thinking. He just follows us out. I'm making out with her, and as we're leaving to go back to my hotel, he's like, "Where the fuck are you going?" And I said, "We're going back to my hotel," and, and he was just like, "You're gonna fuck her and then fly back to New York City." And I was like, yeah, that was what I was going to do. She seemed okay with it, you know? And he was like, well, you got to fight me then. He was that blunt about it. What a fucking cock. And, uh, and 
I was like, no, I'm not going to fight you. So they, I totally pussed out. And when he and the girl, they just left together. Of course. And as they left, uh, and she was, you know, totally seemed fine with it. She didn't seem so broken up about it. But, uh, as they left, there was a, this is completely true. There's a guy in like all white, white sweatshirt and white sweatpants perched on a ledge. And he just yelled out, I wasn't going to let anything happen to you. And I was like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and he said, I kind of patrolled this area down. He was just like a vigilante creep. Wow. Who worked down there and, uh, and we talked for a while and he was actually like kind of cool. He was was cool she hot, guy. the girl? She was all right. She was, she what was a hot in cock Cleveland. blocker. What a fucking so, man. That, that's why I'm not going to be the guy friend. That, that's the guy. I know. It's, uh, it's, she's it's, like my sister. Right. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I'm looking out for her. Miss, miss, she wanted a little action. She exactly. did so. We were having fun. He what if he was it. right to do it? <laughs> <laughs> Keep your meat hooks off her, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> But the guy is just patrolling the area. That's a that's strange. I remember I got an email from the, the guy said he went by. I was hammered, so I was like, "You're like a superhero type." And he's like, "Yeah." I was like, "What's your superhero name?" The Snowflake, and he completely seriously said the White Knight. The White Knight. So oh, that's an, oh. I got an email from the White Knight the next day because <laughs> that's how fucked up I was. I gave him my business card. I had a business card on the road at the time. Oh, maybe he was the White Knight and he wanted to introduce you to his friend, the Grand Dragon, because they knew you were a Jew in Cleveland. Like we don't, <laughs> we don't get many of these here. We'd like a, a meeting. We'd like you to be the guest of honor and. <laughs> <laughs> He's setting you up there, Sam. Yeah, but you got to exchange info after a conversation like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was you, cool. You got to know more of his story. Yeah. I want to now talk to him on the radio. I maybe. tried to email him the other day, and he, and it just bounced back. He changed his email. Oh, oh really? No. Why he probably he? has to. Sure. Yeah, you don't want... If people find out his identity, he can't... Okay, that. That's <laughs> 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 so good. No. <laughs> Well, maybe we could take that take that out, huh? No, no not at all. Please, oh, no, this we've all never taken out one of your bombs, Joe. It's no. Good. So, so how's uh, the career going after all that uh, tension you got, Joe Mackey? Oh, pretty good. Uh, I yeah? go, I go on the road and people go to the shows most of the time, um, which is good. Like I worked a casino about a month ago, and usually casino shows are brutal because it's people who just lost money and they're they're there for no reason. But uh, the Mackey Nation came out, <laughs> and uh, it was a good show. I mean, you uh, got a Mackey Nation? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I got lots of beautiful women around the country into this guy, <laughs> 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 and, and and men. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. All right. So you you didn't get any box in high school? I didn't either. Oh n no, uh, no, I did not. Uh, or college, or my twenties. How old? How old are you? Ah, uh, thirty-six. So, I, I thought that you were in your early twenties. You look good. Oh, thanks. How how old were you the first time you got laid? Ah, uh, ah, uh, pass. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Have you not? Uh, no, I've never. I never. Uh, Are you a no. virgin? Yeah. Wow. I, I, maybe you've talked about that. I haven't seen you. Uh, oh, I you know, I uh, look. Anybody could could have. You know, he's had many opportunities, yeah. and he's just kind of been well, like, no. "What's the what's the holdup?" Oh, uh, well, I just don't want to do it, you know, if, you know, uh, unless, you know, I'm really into someone or in a relationship. Are you really attracted? Are you gay or do you? Are you uh, no, no, okay. I'm straight. Oh, okay. oh this guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, I'm a lady hawk. <laughs> uh, um, so is it a religious thing? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. uh, I'm Catholic. Uh, not many comics are, so I don't, I don't harp on it a lot. Uh, but you want to be married and in love. Ideally, you know, well, I, I've come close a few times, but I'm trying, you know, trying to, uh, trying to wait. It's hard though. Are you scared of it? At this point, yeah. Like, uh, like also, um, I'll, I'm scared of it, but also it's like, at this point, I'm not going to have a good story. It's going to, like, oh, hey, I had sex with this. Yeah, you're 36. Joe, no one's going to be impressed. Mm. No one's going to care. And I don't, like, it's not that big a deal. I don't have think. Have you ever gotten blown? Uh, well, I've, I've messed around a bit. I, you know, I, 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 I but, uh, you know, I just, uh, I don't want to do the whole thing, you know? You haven't fucked? No, I have not. Have you ever licked a vagina? Huh? Uh, well, pass. That's, uh... That's a yes. I think the I passes are yeses. No, because he hasn't got laid. He passed oh, on that. Passed yeah, I just, okay. I just, you know... It scares you looking at that thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it. I don't know how you. You know, what? it's like an acquired taste. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like bourbon or something. Because when I was like younger, I just ate pussy because I was like, this is what men do. And now that I'm older, I'm like, it's actually really nice. Yeah, I enjoy it now. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The first few times, it is kind of a. a you just rough, do it. Yeah, like, this is what you have to do. But yeah, it does get better. It does kind of fucking grow on you, yeah. like, and you find out there's certain parts of it you like. Was it a hairy one you saw or a shaved one? Oh, uh, I've seen I've seen them both. Oh, of course you have. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and which did you prefer? 
Oh, well, I like uh, I like the cleaner look. I guess. Yeah, good. I mean, you like it all shaved and well kept. <laughs> well, 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 uh, yeah, I think so. Is this uncomfortable for you guys? No, no not, not at, at all. all. Oh, okay, that's we that's... smell we smell blood in the water. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're boy. in trouble. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's fascinating. I didn't know. I see Joe I, at the I, cellar all the time. I didn't know I, this about you. I think it's fascinating. Sure. Have you ever come across a smelly one, Joe? Uh, no, but you know what's interesting is like uh. <laughs> I was always terrible, terrible even talking to women. And I was pretty shy, but once I started doing stand-up and started having a little bit of success, uh, the nice thing is it does the work for you. Yeah. Like people will come up to you after shows and you don't have to... You don't have to approach. You don't have to have a, a backstory. Like Sam probably tells people all kind of bull crap or, or whatever. I, you know, I, just, <laughs> I just go up and have a good set. <laughs> You just go up and hit it out of the park and let it speak for itself, right, Joe? I've seen hot women throw themselves at Joe. And you still and Joe just be out. Like, let's go. Let's get out of here. Let's go to the bar across the street. So. I got bowling tomorrow. You know, I don't, I don't need any of this. Well, weren't you seeing somebody? Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a girlfriend. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. How long are you with her? Uh, since December. And how does she feel about this? Because uh, you're with her for nine months now. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been 11 a, months. Yeah, I... I think it's nine months. I don't know. Uh, well, I guess, yeah, I guess because we're October now. Uh, so that's, well. Nine, nine, ten months. She's cool with it. Um, Do you kiss? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, quite well, if you <laughs> ask me. I am. <laughs> Does it turn you on? Of course. Of okay. course. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Wow, and, and then it gets hot and heavy, and then you guys got to back off each other. I don't know how you live that way. That's hard, man. That is hard. Really hard. Is she religious too? Yep. Oh, that helps. All, all right. right, all right. You're on. You're in the same boat. Yeah. If you both kind of that's your thing, then then it's not that bad. Dude. Yeah. I don't mean it as a judgmental thing or anything like that. It's just uh, you know, I'm I'm a pretty awkward guy, and it's just, no, uh, you're not. Well, come no, on. Joe. Come, come on. on, you guys Joe. are being nice. Come on, Joe. You're like an old blanket we throw on. <laughs> <laughs> Money from home, Joe Buck. <laughs> So how, oh man, I want to ask this questions. This is fascinating, yeah. If you want us to stop, we'll stop. Oh, uh, yo, it's your show, so you guys go uh, do well, what you do. I, I mean, the right attitude, Joe has. Thank you, Joe Mackey. I appreciate that. Um, so you guys get really hot and heavy. Then what happens? You go into separate rooms and take care of uh, take care of the beast? Oh, no. Um, get the I poison out, Joe? Do you get the poison out? Oh, uh, uh, no, um, we don't really, you know, I feel kind of bad because maybe she wouldn't want me talking about that kind of stuff, but like, well, just uh, what you do. You don't have to oh, what yeah. she does. What do you do? We, you know, uh, I, I just, you know, say goodnight and go home. You know, uh, it's not that hard if you're. It's what you're used to. Oh, right. They don't live together either. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do you, but do, when you do, you go home. Do you, do you tug your prick? Uh, <laughs> well, um, let's just put it this way. I, <laughs> I clear my browsing history every time I have company. Oh, you watch porn? Okay. That well. Helps. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I think you think you're being really secretive oh, with these the, euphemisms. No one's, <laughs> no one's buying any of this but right wait, now. I, I don't want to check my Twitter. You really do watch later. it. But you really are, this is true what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what kind of porn do you think Joe Mackey looks at? I don't know. What do you what kind I'm of porn go, do you look at? Uh, voyeurism. Uh, tasteful. Tasteful? Yeah. Tasteful. Which Natural. is just regular sex? Uh, they, well, there's a wedding at the, beginning, <laughs> at the beginning, and he comes on his face, and then he says, "Milady," right afterwards. <laughs> there's a very nice breakfast the next day. <laughs> like the 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 orgasm happens, the, and I'm like, "Well, how's this really end?" I mean, <laughs> what about the next the next day? I mean, <laughs> what happens the next day? Yeah. yeah. Oh God, Joe Mackey, that's very fascinating. Well, well, uh, how long have you been watching porn? Well, I don't. I. I mean, how old's the internet? Um, it uh, started. Uh, I don't know. I yeah. guess ninety two ish. If yeah. I would guess it's been around for a while. So you've been watching ninety two when people so, really so started four, paying attention. So four years now. <laughs> four. <laughs> you've been watching it your whole adult life. Um, uh, it's not all I do. You know. No, I know. Yeah, I just. Uh, it's just not something. You know, I'm not as into it as a, a lot of people are. But I'm just a human being, so I make. The same, I make the same judgments that other, you know, other guys make. So you oh. make mess, huh? You make mess. I, I, <laughs> I, I, my apartment is filthy right now. If that's what you're asking, good sir. Ah, uh, got clothes all over the place. I'm a sloth. It's uh, what is interesting, Joe? What is your perfect woman? Someone that's religious, that's willing to hold out. A nice person, uh, that's sweet and pretty and smart. 
And like, uh, I'm sure pretty is probably more up there than, than I make it out to be. It's it kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> it bothers me that that's important, but it is. Why like, does it bother you? It's physical. It's, it, that's part of nature telling yeah. us who to breed with. You're looking at this person every day. Why does it matter? I, of course you know, it should it's, be. It's, just, it's like it's, it's a shallow part of, of who I am. Yeah. Like, I remember, I, I, this is how, I, uh, I went on, I tried to go on a Craigslist date. This was like in 2005, cause I did, I hadn't had a date in a long time, so I was like, I'll, I'm not gonna put a picture, I'm not gonna ask for a picture. And a woman wrote me back, I'm a couple of years older, is that okay? Oh no. <laughs> she was like 50. And you were like 34, 30. <laughs> I was like 20. Oh no, oh, 10 years ago. Yeah. So you were like 25, 26. Where did you, where, where did you wind up meeting up with the old bag? At a, TG, <laughs> at a TGI Friday. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, TGI Friday's <laughs> date with a 50 year old. <laughs> oh, yuck. <laughs> it, was like, it was like a Thursday. <laughs> oh. So I, could, I didn't even have that. What about happy hour? Was it yeah. least happy hour? Well, I had a beer or two, but it was just. I didn't want to be mean, but the whole time I'm like, why would you do that to your. You're going to get caught. Like, why do people lie when they. Like, why do you put a, a personal picture when you're. You look totally different. Like, why do you do that? You're going to get caught. And why would she think that this is an okay thing to? And, and you're a nice guy, so you went through the date. I would assume. I went through it, but you could tell I was pretty irritated. Did she try to make moves on you? No, no, no. <laughs> she said, "Let's do this again," and I was like, "Okay," but then I didn't. You know, I didn't sure. call her again. Yeah. Wow. She's telling the same story, but a lot differently somewhere else. <laughs> and this 24 year old, he was weird. He didn't want to fucking pay the check. <laughs> he wouldn't touch me. Weird voice. <laughs> that is that is a story, Joe. Yeah. Mackey. Yeah. You don't go to strip clubs or anything, right? I don't like strip clubs. I don't know. Like, do you guys like them? Because, like, I don't like it's, them. They're all right. They're all right. They're overrated, I think. Yeah. Every, every once in a while, it's kind of fun. A good lap dance. If, if a girl gives a good lap dance, it's hard not to enjoy. Any girl that's going to rub her ass cheeks on your dick is a winner. Nudity's <laughs> always all right, but I don't know. Strip clubs are overrated. They're, they're getting too serious with their profession, too. Plus, like, uh, like, I haven't been to one since a bachelor party 10 years ago, but, you know, you go to have a good time, and then the, the strippers, they're, like... Their job is to try to get you to pay for those lap they're, dances, and if they get you aggressive, don't, you can't relax yeah. in there, Joe. You can't be a cheapskate in a strip club. No, you can't. Oh and no! And I do not want to make it rain. I want the weather to be good. <laughs> <laughs> they also like if you. I took out my phone to text, and they're like, they're like, I was in the shittiest strip club in Milwaukee. It was like a year ago, and I take my phone out to text, and they're just like, they're like, you got to get out of here. No photo. I'm like, I'm not taking photos of these right. disgusting strippers. You know, I don't want to remember this. You know? <laughs> why would you want? Why would they think you want photos? Yeah. Well, it's probably the guys that don't want photos. Photographed too. They don't want you taking pictures oh, in sure, there. Oh, sure, sure. Who knows? But, but Private but, investigators get sent in there to fucking track down sure. husbands Plus, and shit. It's like when you're doing a set, it's distracting. <clears throat> but meanwhile, that's right. Meanwhile, though, a uh, girl I'm seeing did a like a Chippendales bachelorette that, party, and they're taking pictures of the guy's dick in their face. The guys could care less, you know, because yeah. it's just a women thing. Yeah, I'm sure the wives don't want that out there, though. <laughs> right. Married lady with a giant dick on her cheek. <laughs> oh no, I, I had a Miller Light last night. I don't know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> Drunken slobs. <laughs> awesome. I think they get crazier than guys. I think. I knew a guy who used to dance um, at these uh, bachelorette parties. Yeah, he said that they were much worse. He said the women are much worse they than men are with women. Feeling. Yeah, they grab your dick. One guy, Jim Florentine remembers him. I think his name was Cher Cherry. I forget his name. He was a, a booker by the time we knew him. And Jim said sometimes the, the guy said sometimes the girls would fucking heat up coins and put a hot coin in your thing. Oh, God. Yeah. He's like, Why? A hot, I don't know. What the hell is that? I don't about? know. Do not know. That's strange. Yeah. Coin, coins are filthy, too. Yes, they are. <laughs> That's just a terrible idea for a lot of reasons. <laughs> what are they taking a lighter to the coin? I mean, some, Someone's got to explain that. Yeah, I, don't, know what yeah, that's I, about. I vaguely remember that. It just seems like a crazy thing to do. And it's okay to be physically attracted to someone, Joe Mack. I yes, think that's it how it works. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I think what happens is you, you're physically attracted <laughs> to someone, and then you hope they back it up with a good personality and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's that's probably that's, true. That's that's pretty much how it works. Yeah. But, but like, uh, you know, a lot, of the, like, uh, a lot of the girls you meet that are really cool... You know, aren't, aren't that attractive? And sometimes, like, oh boy, I, you know, I'm when I was single, I was like, oh boy, that'd be, that's a really cool girl, you know, that, that you could date. But, um, you know, it's it's unfortunate that you're not attracted to them. Yeah. Do you like big boobs? 
Uh, I, I like a pretty face more than anything else. Um, nice eyes, nice smile. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, You're going to be part of Jim Norton's documentary. Yeah, well, well, I'm just how I make people smile, I'm doing something on that. Oh, well, a whole documentary. Yeah. That's yeah. a beautiful thing to make the world happy. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all, that's, all that's going on in the news, you got the California thing and the ISIS and... Yeah. Just looking over at news Snowden stories. Snowden says he's... Are you trying to... Would go to jail to come uh, back to America. Are you America. trying to stop talking about Are you the trying to... Uh, yeah, I was you trying to change the subject. On. Do you guys notice that? You like no, I want us to just move on. Pressed. No, I mean, we, we can talk about whatever you want. I just... Uh, I don't want to, like... All right, how about this? Are you a germaphobe? Mm. Uh, Good question. Yeah. Not, not really, no. About money. No, I'm not a germaphobe uh, because... Well, I wouldn't be in New York City if I was. This, this city is a cesspool of germs. No offense. It's a beautiful <laughs> city, New Yorkers. I love this place. But, like, uh, uh, <laughs> you got to ride the subway, and, like, what am I going to carry a rag around every time I have to yeah. hold on <laughs> to the, the pole? A Purell instead of a y rag, maybe? Y yeah. Uh, yeah, rag. <laughs> rag. 1920. <laughs> gl gl gloves. I'll no. go with that for a second. The, the, when you have to grab some, those poles every once in a while, you're like, uh, and you just feel the grease. Yeah, and when you sit in the seats, especially on the end, you're like, somebody slept here last night. Which it, which is sad, but it's also gross. Well, they make the seats where they you really can't sleep on them anymore. It's tough, but I, I see them all that you mean. Yeah, yeah the homeless these people sleep outdoors. Um, those those people they can sleep on a fucking subway it's, seat easily. It's amazing. It's amazing how they can sleep. It's amazing how they get a very good night's sleep as all hell is breaking loose around them. And yeah, they're just snoring away. Nick DiPaolo had a funny joke about that. How about how he's a bad sleeper? He's like you see a homeless guy. He's fucking. I think he said he's he's falling asleep with his fuck uh, a broken Michelob bottle on his eyes. <laughs> He's like, I can't sleep on a $2,000 water bed. It was some funny, I'm butchering Nick's great joke, but it was like, just a hilarious observation. Uh, yeah. Uh, wow, well, we're getting to know Joe Mackey. Yeah. And a, Sam Morell in studio as well. Do you guys hang out? Yeah. It's, it's you guys are pals? Friend, oldest friend uh, yeah, in comedy. We, yeah, we started comedy at the same comedy class. Uh, <laughs> class. Wow, class. you guys came out of a class? That's encouraging. Yeah. Cause I never I never knew really a lot of good comic comics strip. that came out of classes, but that's that's good to know. How, how many years ago? Ten? Ben? Yeah, just ten years ago. Who and, taught it? DF? DF. Yeah, and he was a good teacher because yeah, he really, it. he forced you to <laughs> only write clean at first, which is important at first. At first. Um, and... Uh, he kept you really rigid with a format. So you kind of learned what you needed in a joke t t to be there. What was his motive for writing clean? That it's just harder to get work in the beginning if you're really dirty? I think he said, everyone comes in there writing dirty. That I, okay. That, uh, you know, and they would say, well, well, Andrew Dice Clay does it. And that was their justification. Well, you try to go make that, you know, original and funny at first. When you, when you suck and you've never done it before, it's so hard. And, and teaching clean kind of forces you to... To think a little more. Sure. Uh, if you off don't write clean in the beginning, you're never going to write you're clean. Never yeah, clean. I think that's good yeah. advice because I had guys write me and ask for advice about clean comedy and should I just do what I want? And it's like you know, in the beginning, it helps you to be able to do it because you can always write dirtier. Like yeah. writing yeah. dirtier is always a little bit easier. Do what you want once you've learned what you're doing. Uh, also, when you start burning material it, it, at all, you're just like, well, it's harder to create material if I'm going to be, you know, clean. Yeah, if you're going to be on TV, you got to. I mean, even Pryor and Carlin did the Tonight Show. It's not like every comic has just been filthy. Kinnison did fucking. Yeah. Didn't mm -hmm. you let him in, I think? Yeah. yeah. SNL. Oh, I mean, yeah. he curse on those shows. Right. <laughs> he just started off with, there's still time to call the church and stop this. Yeah. Oh, that's a great set. Yeah, and he had he did the fucking thing. I think it was on uh, where he's doing the fucking nailing Christ in, but they cut, chopped it out of the fucking replay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, he was a preacher, though. I mean, he, was, yeah. so he did a bit yeah. about nailing Jesus into the cross and Christ screaming. It was a really funny yeah. bit. Oh, it's wow. an amazing bit. Yeah, Sam Kinison. Remember he was defending great. not booking Kinison at the comic strip. You remember that? Oh yeah. Was... What? <laughs> we were just talking about how great Kinison was one day at the comic strip. He's like, ah, I never booked him. You know, we were Who just said like, that? and he was proud of that. Yeah, well, oh, we won't God. say his name, but uh, yeah, we we're just like, ah, well, you should have. And then he, was, he listed he probably off should've. Should've. yeah a bunch of great yeah. comics. <laughs> <laughs> we're like... Oh, we're running a name down. Yeah, here. I'm just saying. I'm gonna guess. I think I know who it is. But what was his reasoning for not booking Sam Kinison? I think he just didn't like dirty acts. I think you know a lot. A lot of really good dirty acts never but it was really more came than, through there, with the exception of uh, Eddie Murphy. I it, think it, it, it was more than a dirty act, though. 
Does I he agree. understand the difference? Yeah. Well, there's there a lot are of people that are dirty just to be dirty, and then there's others making some pretty strong points. There's a lot of bad comics that are dirty that murder, but there's a lot of good comics that are dirty and are great. But some guys can't tell the difference, and mm. and they'll even book the. There's a lot of dirty comics that work there. That also, they book if, and, you, if you introduce well, yourself as just like this guy's a clean comic, oh, how, how about funny? Like, I don't think yeah. of Brian Regan is a clean comic. I think he's hilarious. Funny. He's yeah. a pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. You're the funny or you're not. Exactly. That's uh, that's what it should be based on. But uh, we we know better. Well, you make we? a lot more money if you're clean because you can do you have a lot more variety you can do if you're clean. Like I, I got like Regan. Mm. Um, you know, he makes a shit load of money because he can. You can bring so many more people to see a guy like Regan than you can to see a dirtier. He murders too. Yeah, he does. He crushes. God. Where are you from, Joe? I'm from State College, Pennsylvania. Oh, where Penn State University is? Oh, we oh. think we're tying all in what happened here. Did you ever do any uh, day programs when you were there when you were a kid? Uh, <laughs> what, what did, I, I, did, uh, I did meet Jerry Sandusky. Of course he you did. Like Let's get to the bottom ball. of that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's all starting to make sense. Sure is. So what happened? Did he uh, touch you where it's dirty? Did you meet him in a basement? No, Joe? you know, I... <laughs> did his wife make you cookies? <laughs> right. uh, uh, I was, you know, he, uh, he seemed to prey upon people without good families, and I was lucky to not... Be in that situation, so. Uh, but I only I didn't do his football camp. He had a day thing, like a, a one day, like football <laughs> clinic. I went to, and he seemed like a really nice guy. Why did you go to the one day football clinic? Oh, uh, I don't know. I never even thought I was going to be a football <laughs> person. That's ridiculous. Not with his face. <laughs> <laughs> so you, wait, Hollywood. You, so you went during the day, and um, he was nice. Seemed like a great guy. Everyone in. Everyone in town thought he was a great guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh. That came out. You're right. Did he pat you on the bottom for a good play? No, and I wouldn't make a good play, but, like, <laughs> um. I. Uh, it's. People. People. For the, la for the last three years or whatever, every time people say I'm from Penn State, or I'm fr I grew up in State College, they're like, no, oh, did Jerry Sandusky molest you? And just once, I just want to lie and say yes. <laughs> sure, why well, you should? Why not? No, it's just like it's just like such a like I don't know. People, the first five times I was like, this isn't, this isn't, this is annoying to me now. But like, yeah. uh, it's just, uh, it's I don't know. It's unfortunate that such a nice town has. Sure, that's what everyone talks about. Has been about. sullied. Yes, he's besmirched our fine reputation, and I won't stand for it any longer. <laughs> But I we, wouldn't have asked that, but it comes down to, like, you say you're a virgin, and you have these, oh, you know, yeah. it's like, maybe, was there any, you know, and then you say, well, I took well, a Sandusky you, class, you're like, aha. Uh -huh. You didn't ask it like a, yeah, you did yeah. I asked it, like, uh, lecherously, did he fuck you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's like, it's died down now, too. Sure. It was just like, for, you know, I go to an open mic, it's like, oh, you're from State College, oh, God. Also, you had to Here hear the go. Catholic jokes, I mean, you had to hear a lot of pedophile jokes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, right. there's a lot yeah. of them, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I I I would tell a joke when people would uh, I don't want to say it but like I about how you think it's like people say why do good things happen to why do bad things happen to good people it's like well how do you know they're good people sometimes Cause you never really know you never know, really know whatever, whatever what else is going on in people's lives and that was just the the premise of the joke was that <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know it's just it's it's really sad that it happened and uh, oh boy still still can't believe that happened. Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> that's a big one for a town. Yeah, yeah it really is. You wonder what the wives are thinking in that situation, like a you know, like Cosby's wife or Sandusky's wife. You're like, they must on some level know something sneaky. Cosby's wife, she probably didn't know he was raping them. She probably knew he was just cheating. And she's yeah. like, "Look, I'm I'm fucking married into an empire. I look like Nelson Mandela at this point. What am I gonna do? I'll stick with him." Uh, she she had, stuck she, with him. She had to know he was a woman. Sure. Was her. Uh, Sandusky never, you know, asked you into the showers or anything, right? I just oh want, no, it, was, I it wasn't it even like an clear. overnight thing or anything like that. No, I I met him. Well, like, literally sweaty, met him one time, and it was like a day camp. It was a nice. There was like a hundred kids. It was a nice. How thing. old were you? Maybe maybe ten. Oof. Well, you're prime age, so oh, you got boy. lucky. Well, there must have been a real looker in there who outshined you. <laughs> you. I wonder how close you were. Oh, that. <laughs> I was a good-looking kid. I mean, oh, you are? Yeah. Oh, oh, those rosy red cheeks. Oh, yeah. Oh, Eager young lad. Cherub face. <laughs> yeah, very pinchable cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice head of hair to just run your fingers through. <laughs> Lustrous is how it's described. It's a life will bounce to it. <laughs> well, you got lucky. Yeah. You got lucky. I think you're right. Where'd you start stand-up? Uh, I did a couple open mics in college, but you can't, 
you need a club or you need somewhere to do it because you know, open mics in college towns is people playing Dave Matthews covers and so I, I I came to New York and I took the class. Uh, if you don't know where to start, and I watched a comedian that Seinfeld documentary and and I researched it and the the comic strip at the time would do auditions on on Monday nights. Uh, I don't know if you I don't know how you how you pass there, but like uh, there was this lady Starla Muraz would sure, run the Starla. and uh, and it would be a program. So you get to perform with real comics, and if you took the class, they would do an audition show. And that's how I ended up passing, but it was... But she pulled that shit on you where she had you come in, and then during your set, she just left the room you on an audition see people, show. I could see her leave. Yeah. I could see, you could see people, and I was like, oh, that's... Maybe she saw what she needed to see, and... But then she passed you? No, I passed, uh... Who passed you, JR? Uh, Greg. Uh, Greg? Yeah, and I passed from the show audition. I didn't pass from the regular one. Uh... But that, that, if you if you research it, that was the only club that had a a path to getting real shows, mm -hmm. which is hard to do. That was one thing I'll give the strip is they had like late night, so comics went yeah. on after the regular show, and we had to. Was that around when you were? Oh up? yeah, that's how I got in there. I mean, I, actually, Lucian never liked me. Um, he didn't hate me. But the guy Lucian who used to run it was legendary for being yeah. shitty to comedians. But again, if he liked you, he liked you, and he would talk like this. And I don't do a good <laughs> Lucian impression, but there's plenty of guys that do. And he would, uh, you know, you'd audition for him, and then he would take you into his little tiny office in the front of the strip. And it was never great. But he wasn't awful to me when he, when he failed me. Um, I finally got in in 95 because I won some contest there to go before the Aspen Cost. It was the Vail Comedy Festival. So by that, I just started getting spots after that. But I would get one a week late. But there was late night. Yeah, you'd go in, oh, you'd go in with Florentine and this guy, Eric mm. McMahon, a comedian oh, buddy right, from sure. Jersey, and sometimes Vinny Brand, and we would just hang out and maybe get on at midnight. Yeah, that's what we did. And it was, the shows usually suck then, because it's people who've seen eight real, like, professional comics, and they haven't left. And a lot of times. And we'd get cut by, they'd have this, they'd have a right side of late night and a left side. And if you showed up, we'd be there three hours. And if you want, and we were, cause we were on the right side. If you were on the left side, you could show up at the last minute and just cut right in front of us. So it was, it was, it was infuriating. It was people who were passed for real spots. It was, yes. And sometimes it wasn't the best comics because they weren't getting real spots, but like, Ten years ago, maybe they got real spots and and they haven't written since. Yeah, and they, they were like usually since. it was an occasionally good one, but occasionally it was usually good. usually garbage. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they put us through the ringer there. In some ways, it was good for us. It definitely sure. made it's good us to learn better bad comics. Shows. But I mean, I remember they put when I auditioned there. When I finally got past there. They put me on. They had. They were trying to do a reality show, so they were trying to do like a American side, Idol, yeah, it was like yeah. an American Idol type show, where like the book at the time, Jr. was trying to be Simon, so he would just trash everyone. So they, I went on there with all these amateur comics, and some were. I remember the first time I did it, this one guy had a meltdown. Right, I'd waited. I got. I drew number seven out of seven, and the guy who got number six. 70 people in the room he had a complete meltdown and he walked the entire room so i performed for like four people so i had to come oh, back God, man yeah and then i went back and it was three comics judges and one of them was kind of shitty to me the other two were cool. but like you still remember who that comic was who was shitty because you're like what what comic would want to judge i wouldn't want to no, that that'd be hard. To, I could be hard to be shitty to comics, like yeah. like, like legitimately shitty to. I, you make fun of them, but to be like, I, I did one of those things at there too. With uh, it was Richie Tinkin, who was the owner, and a couple other people, and I could goof on them. I think I guest judged her one time, but to be cruel to them, it's like these are young guys. Like, yeah, that, if it's a guy doing it fifteen years and he stinks, he can handle it. But a guy is brand new. It's like yeah, help him out a little. Yeah, bit. it doesn't feel right. Some of that constructive criticism, right? Do you remember the comedian who was shitty to you though? Of course, yeah, yeah, of course. yeah and I. See him around every now and then, and and um, I never, I wasn't a fan of his comedy. And you're so tempted to be like, "Well, I think you suck," you know? Did he say you suck? No, he said, "I think you're." Uh, he said something like, "He said you're kind of hacky," and I was just like, "Okay." And, I, no, and what happened? I think you suck. <laughs> yeah, I said I think he was right. It was Joe Mackey. Uh, <laughs> but no, I uh, and then I remember Jr. who was trying to be the Simon. I had a really good set, and and he said, ah, "I've seen most of that five minutes." And I was like, "What well, was an audition set?" And he said, he's like, ah, I don't want to pass you. And the crowd was actually on my side because I was the only one who had a decent set. 
And Marina Franklin came in after a few drinks, and she was like, this is bullshit, it's an audition set. She was like, I was a younger comic, and she was really supportive. And he's like, all right, and Sherrod Small was hosting, and, right. he, was, and he was really supportive, because he had seen Joe and I around. Ah, and, uh, and he was the always, two blacks, <laughs> I see. <laughs> the blacks came to my, they came to my <laughs> aid. Oh, boy. And, uh, and then they, he's like, come back, he's like, all right, come back next week, new material. I was like, all right, and, and then I ended up passing the next week. Nice. Right. But it was like, it was like four, it took four or five auditions, you know, it's it always... What you guys have to go through, my yeah. God. A strip I don't go into at all, but I just never felt, I never... Comfortable in there. Whenever I was doing TV, for me to go in, the strip was always good beforehand to work my clean set, because I would always bomb my fucking dumb face off, and that got it out of the way. Mm -hmm. I actually met you at the strip. Did uh, we meet at the strip? I was doing late night, which was like <clears throat> eight years ago, and I don't know why you were in there. I think you were in there just for one minute. You were really friendly, though, because I was like, oh, I'm a young comic, and... uh uh, I usually don't talk to people, but you were at the bar uh, by yourself at the time. Uh, I think you were talking to Jr. or Greg or something. Uh, that was a good story. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm interested to hear it. So uh, you said hello and we said hello? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my cool. God. Uh, sorry, you probably just lost. No, you always no, want to be nice we're, to we're the fine. comics. These guys got their egg sandwiches in front of them. We could take a quick break, let you guys eat. Okay. Is that all right, Joe? What, yeah. are, you, what are you promoting, Joe Mackey? Oh, I'm uh, working at the parlor uh, in Bellevue near Seattle this Thursday to Saturday. It's going to be a heck of a time. Come out. Yeah, it's a good club. I was there not long ago. Very nice. Oh, good, good. You like Seattle? It'll be my second time there. I had a blast the last time, so... Was it cloudy or, uh, or uh, sunny? It missed it the whole time, so I'm going to bring some sunshine it's to their of... lives in the Pacific <laughs> Northwest. That's the way to look at it, Yeah, so. It's kind of nice when it's uh, misty out that way. Not, not for the locals that have to deal with it every single every day. Every single day, yeah. But if you go there and just visit, it's kind of cool. I love Seattle. Love I was it. just there over the weekend. It's, I like it a lot, too. Yeah, you were just at Laughs. Laughs in Kirkland. It's, it's, it was pretty fun. Are the people cool out there? The crowds were great. They, yeah, just, they, they were awesome. They enjoy their comedy, I would assume. Yeah, and they're, uh, they came out. They, co they come out there, too. Uh, they, were, they were good crowds there. Good. And Sam, where are you going to be? Sam Morrell. Uh, my Comedy Central special is on October 24th. Nice. And my oh, album nice, comes out the day before, October 23rd. It's called Class Act, and it will be on iTunes. So uh, Where did you uh, shoot? Village Underground. Oh, right. Oh, that's for my album. The, the special is at the Royale in Boston. Oh, good. The Royale. I don't know that theater. Yeah, it's, it was the half hour thing. That's okay. where they just shot them all. Awesome. That's yeah, very good cool. for you, man. It's fun. Thank Sounds you. funny. So is Joe. And Jimmy's going to be in Irvine. Uh, yeah, I go to Irvine Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I got a bunch of stuff. Albany, Charlotte, Erie, Jacksonville. And I'll just, just go to my site if you want to, if oh, you're that, interested. That Erie club was fun. You know, I, it used to be a totally clean club, and I, it's not anymore. It's not anymore, yeah. I think the original owners bought it back from the people who had it totally clean. It was. Uh, I was there in February. Heck of a... They came out there too. It oh, was, good. Yeah, great. Those totally clean clumps, they are always itching for a cum joke or a dick joke. You know, you can sure. always just feel it. You know, they yeah. want it. They I've tell never... you not to do it, but then they, the crowd, if the crowd lasts, like, oh, that was fine. Yeah, yeah. And I've never done okay it. with it. Clean club like that. All right. When we get back, the Rage Against the Machine bassist doesn't believe in the moon landing or ISIS. Mm. How do you not believe in ISIS? Uh, well, we're going to explain next. Stay there. Oh, we got a lot going on in the studio today. We got uh, Joe Mackey for the first time, getting to know him a bit, and uh, Sam Morell, who's starting to do our show more and more, and we're happy about that, Sam. Me too. Thank Very you. Very happy about that. Is everyone's mic on? I think so. Oh, there you go, Joe. Uh... Did you want to talk about that or not? Oh, no? yeah, why not? Why what not? happened? I well, missed it in the break. He's, you know, he's having a good appearance, and uh, the feedback on Joe Mackey is very, very good. And then uh, he has to read someone uh, calling him a joke thief. And, and he was explaining it to me during the break, and, and it's just not fair. It's just it, it, not fair. And with that's not people. what I meant, by the way. Go ahead. Oh, well, what happened was, uh, <laughs> and Sam can vouch for me on this. Uh, when I started doing sets, I would say gang and team to address the crowd for years. And there's even a clip of me doing it on YouTube in 2010. And Colin Quinn on Twitter calls people gang and team. Uh, so when I said, I actually st have since stopped doing it because I found it kind of gimmicky uh, to do in a stand-up set. Um, but oh, since so I say gang and team... Colin Quinn gimmicky? No, no, no. Um, his Twitter's <laughs> one of the best Twitter feeds. But in stand-up, I is. felt like people started to expect me to do it because I did it on Last Comic Standing. And it was like, it was a way to get a laugh without telling a joke. And I was, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I don't want to be the gang and team comedian. So I'm going to stop saying it. But people don't know that I've been doing that for years. And they know Colin's Twitter feed. So they think you stole from Colin. Yeah. And that's, it's like, it's so easy to just accuse someone without doing any research and that's what's frustrating about it but at least they think I'm stealing from a good comedian yeah but you're not and no. Sam Morell's gonna back you up now yeah, Sam. I mean I 
it's not like you're taking a joke. You're taking it's like an expression. It's not even a no. You know? And I was doing it before Twitter even existed. Uh, yeah. So it's like uh, and, I, and just so you know, uh, Colin Quinn's not accusing you of that. No, whatsoever, no. But so. it's embarrassing because people will tag him. Like it's only happened like three times, but uh, people will tag him in a tweet. It's like Joe Mackey stealing your <laughs> Twitter or something, and I'm yeah. like, oh, great, he's gonna see this, and you know, it's it's like you don't want to. You want like a really good comic to think you're some hack ripoff yeah. artist. So it's just it's one of those things. I'm just like, oh, uh, I'm not angry about it. I'm just frustrated because how do you respond to to people who aren't? You gonna, know, you know, look into it because you know the real story. Yeah, and that's what frustrates you. Yeah. And you know, you didn't rip off Colin Quinn. No, and I would if I was going to steal stuff, I would steal jokes, wouldn't I? I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I never heard that. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, no, no, no problem. You should apologize to Colin Quinn, and we'll move on from this. <laughs> <laughs> Have you talked to Colin about it? No, uh, I don't he's know a little him all that. <laughs> he's, he seems very friendly. I just don't know him very well. But and it's already like I just feel like you got that right. By the way, seems. It, oh, he's oh, he's, <laughs> no, he's been Colin's very friendly when I've interacted with him. It's just sure. uh, he always is at first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he turns into a pile of steaming garbage. Not not long after. I told you we were down there fucking looking at boats together, eating ice cream. Yeah. It was fucking so... Cr I'm like, I'm on a date with Colin. Yeah. It was so romantic. Just walking around uh Recently, yeah. Three weeks, a month ago. I remember you telling us. Down looking at boats. Yeah, it's fucking nice, isn't it? I'm like, yeah, I guess it is. We're just <laughs> two old men that could never fucking find that special someone. It's like a scene from Arthur or something. That was awful. <laughs> looking at the boats two fucking, on the river. Two aging Moes just looking at the boats. Didn't really he awful. make fun of your ice cream or something? I'm, I'm trying to remember. He said something awful to you. He might have, but it was the ice cream was so good I actually treated myself to two cones. Yes. Two scoops or two, no, cones. two cones? I went back and got another one. No kidding. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Colin gave me the business for that one. I think that's what it was. He gave you the business on it. Couldn't help it. So uh you guys fans of Rage Against the Machine. Not really. They're the white guys with dreadlocks, right? So I uh, I don't know much about him. I, I don't uh, like him. I don't uh, really know much. I uh I definitely like their music. Although yeah. you know, rolling down Rodeo with a shotgun, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy broke that broke down that song recently, and I saw Jim's point. Yeah, just fucking fake Mavericks. Whoa, you're gonna ground Rodeo with a shotgun? That's a great, what a dangerous area <laughs> you are. Wow, these guys fucking go after the rich man. It's, <laughs> it's also like they do an award show and then they. They mess up with the, you know, they do something outlandish at the award show. And it's like, well, why'd you go to the award show? It's exactly. It's like, don't go. Like, yeah. you, know who, you know who had a right to shit on award shows? Brando. Because he fucking, when, when the Oscar came up, he sent some fucking chick to babble. Yeah. That's balls. Yes. Where did, George C. Scott, I think, didn't accept his best Oscar. That's how you tell an award show to go fuck itself. But Woody Allen just doesn't even show up. Yeah, don't even go. You know? Just like, doesn't go. That, yeah. That's real balls. I, I'm with Mackie, these people that go to these award shows and like, ugh, award shows. Yeah, what are we that's doing a, here? I want to network and be seen, but yeah, I'm also exactly. Mad. Speaking of Marlon Brando, I, I, I meant to tell Jimmy this morning, might as well tell him on air, this lady that we had in for the, the doc show last night turned us on to a Brando uh, documentary. I don't know if you've seen it yet, and I know you like Marlon Brando. Basically, it's what, audio of him? Him on the phone or something? She was saying. It was sounds like it's you. one side of a conversation. One side of a conversation, and they fill in the pictures of the things he's talking about. And there's like a conversation he had with Michael Jackson, but you don't really, you don't hear Michael Jackson, but you hear him talking to Michael Jackson. She says it's amazing. Wow. Uh, so he called Michael. Yeah, all his phone calls, and uh, you know they have just so much audio of him, and they put it together in a documentary. Uh, do you know what it's called? I'm looking it up. I'm looking. But it, it sounds fascinating. One psychopath talks to another. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. two, could you find two more successful, famous fucking lunatics? It's called Listen to Me, Marlin. Yeah. A documentary that utilizes hundreds of hours of audio that Marlon Brando recorded over the course of his life to tell the screen legend story. That sounds uh, like it's a good... Is it out yet? It, it came says out this summer. Oh, it came out... Why didn't we hear about this? I didn't hear about it. It, they're calling it a uh, masterpiece. Anyway, uh, uh, Jimmy's a Brando fan, so I would I'm, love to hear that. Sure, listen to me, Marlon. I'm I'm definitely checking that. And Rage Against the Machine, like I don't I don't say <clears throat> like I'm not a fan, but I don't think that they're bad musicians or that they're like they're they're, they're, they're great not musicians. talented guys. Yeah, really. Talented. I just don't like the I I just ugh, that message kind of irritates me. Like. You know, well, Tim uh, Comerford, right? That's how you say it. Most notable, the uh, the basis for the rap metal band Rage Against the Machine unveiled himself as a believer of conspiracy theories. Where are you at, Joe, with the conspiracy theories? You believe in any of this? Uh, well, I 
think ISIS probably exists. I there's people in ISIS that would disagree that they don't exist. You could just ask <laughs> ISIS. Yeah. Like, yeah we're, just we're ask here. ISIS. This is a great fucking uh, it's a great talk show you call in for advice. <laughs> Behead her. Behead her. Beat her to death. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, my wife smiled at a half moon. <laughs> Kill her. <laughs> Burn her vagina. That's a good point. <laughs> Any of these conspiracies you're into, though? Loch Ness Monster? Let's go with the easy ones. Well, Bigfoot? If there was a Loch Ness Monster, he's not doing a good job being a monster because <laughs> he's not killing. <laughs> what the hell kind of monster just sits out in a lake and you don't even know he's there? That's a good point. Plus, you could find it so easily with all the technology sure, these yeah. days. and. Bigfoot, I mean, come on. We would, If there was a Bigfoot, we've killed all the big feet. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I yeah. mean, it's just, yeah, like this monster, it has no track record of being a monster. You're 100% yeah, right. I, I think zero victims would be the number. Yeah, all this, zero. The fisherman's got a grainy image. Why is it always a grainy <laughs> image? Like, there's good cameras that you could, like. I could take a good picture. The yeah. most famous the, photo has been declared a hoax. The guy who took this called the, the surgeon's right? photo, yeah, which is a very famous silhouette picture. He said it was just something he turned upside down and snapped the photo. Man, unbelievable. By the way, I, I met a cabbie last night as I was coming home late, and, uh, oh, would he babble about conspiracy stuff. Uh, How really? the Smithsonian has uh, a bunch of American Indian bones of people who are 10 to 12 feet tall. And they, there was once a 36-foot tall man. I taped him, but I didn't get much tape of him. It was more me responding. He couldn't hear it. Can we hear it? I'll play it later. I don't know if it's any good. I forgot about it until Joe Yeah, but that's like a Marlon first. Brando thing. Let's listen to Jim Norton. I don't want to do it now. It's been, I'll only listen to it first. Well, listen, maybe there's a little, I like these guys. A little piece. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I, tomorrow. I love talking to the cab drivers. Yeah, he's a white guy. And he I talk to there. every single guy. And the white ones are the crazy ones. He looked at me in the mirror when I got in, and we were bumper to bumper traffic. And he goes, Yeah, you want to hear something funny? <laughs> and immediately I'm like, No. But I'm like, Yeah. And he goes, uh, So uh, Donald Trump and his wife, his wife's being interviewed. And she goes, You know, I met Donald. I didn't even know who he was. And he asked me for my number, and I said, No. But then I got home, and a little while later, I changed my mind, and I called him. <laughs> and I'm like, that was my reaction. Stunned silence. And I'm like, what do you, I don't, like, what? He goes, you know what I mean, right? I'm like, no. And he goes, you know, she, uh, she, uh, you know, she called him later. And I'm like, oh, so she already had his number. He goes, yeah, she probably did some research and found out how much he's worth. Ah, like, oh, yuck. That's the opening line. I didn't start recording until 15 minutes in, unfortunately. Oh, my God. I realized I had a gem. These guys have a lot to say. <laughs> Slowly lollygagging down 23rd <laughs> yeah. Street. No rush whatsoever. Uh, oh, boy. Nice, slow ride. <laughs> oh Take boy. the long way home. <laughs> slow down for the yellow and keep talking. These, these guys want to talk, too, man. If you say, hey, how are you? doing they will tell you how they're doing <laughs> and it's always weird to see a female cabbie right yeah is that bad to say every once in a while you get in and there's a female cabbie that takes you back for a second no, like, I, don't Whoa, what's ever, I don't think i've ever i've been, had yeah I, I i had the conspiracy theory guy once and i w it was i was like please stop i put my headphones in thinking you get the hand he just talked louder he's like if i probably gotta you know jimmy had the best cab driver ever the guy with the american flag ties the courteous cabbie was he called or oh was that's he? right I'm trying to remember we uh, we dragged him in here because Jimmy, he was so amazing that Jimmy exchanged numbers or whatever with the guy. I got his we, card. We got him in. He, he hands, what, positive thoughts out? The positive cabbie, I think. And positive I, cabbie. Uh, there was a website if you could maybe quickly find He it. was a nice man. He, I, I ramoned him. He absolutely was a nice guy. Um, he, uh, what was his name? Paul, uh, Paul the Positive. Uh, Paul the positive cabbie, <laughs> and uh, he would give messages of positivity. You get he was wearing like a suit or whatever when you get in a tuxedo, and you're like, I'm Paul the positive. It was this whole thing. Things get better, gang. I think he lost his mind after 9 11. I don't remember. But I get he was a lovely man. He wasn't a. Oh, he, yeah. was, he, he was a rather fine. pleasant fellow. Yeah. yeah, he was a fine gentleman. I hope he's well. Uh, yeah. Anyway, okay, so the Rage Against the Machine bassist. Where, what did he say? We? So, How do you not believe ISIS exists? Well, speaking of Rolling Stone, the musician admits to believing some of the more popular conspiracy theories and said he even confronted Buzz Aldrin once about the moon landing <laughs> being fake. Where are you at with the moon landing, Joe? Oh, I, I believe it happened because... Go away! Sure. Yeah, I mean... You yeah, prove it, though. Well, I, I mean, I, I can't prove it, but we got, we got the videotape and you, they, we have the rockets. We still have those Saturn Vs <laughs> sitting around. I mean... Why haven't we gone back? Yeah. 
there's just not much there that we can do anything with. Also, oh, the, the space shuttle, oh man, I could talk NASA all day. The space shuttle, <laughs> see the Air Force wanted cargo delivery and NASA wanted uh, human uh, carrying ability. So it had to be so big that they couldn't mount it on top of the rockets. They had to mount it on the side. All kind of technical problems. They said it was going to launch like every two weeks there'd be a space shuttle launch. The entire history of the program, it was only about a hundred launches. So it was, it was far more, it was like an order of magnitude more expensive. So this, how, how ineffective and, and disastrous the space shuttle was, uh, ended up taking money away from all NASA's other projects. It was, they were supposed to have a second stage for it that could make it, uh, break the Earth's gravity, where instead of all we could do is go in, in orbit around Earth, we couldn't even go to the moon with it. And there's really nothing up there. It's like, now they could just send a probe up there, get a bunch of fucking rocks. What are you going to grab from the moon? Yeah. Uh, I think that'd just be cool to to do. Sometimes it's just cool to they do. Wanna, they want to spend the money elsewhere and go to Mars. They're working yeah. on going to Mars. Yeah. yeah. Why don't we put one of those uh, little uh, robotic things on, on the moon and let it tool around and show everybody where the fucking flag is? That, right, that, Joe? Yeah. And the footprints. And the foot... And the... the the car. Did we leave the car behind? I think we left yeah, the car. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I don't know if it was a car, car, but is more it, like a golf cart. It's like a moon buggy. A moon, moon buggy. buggy. Let's go with a moon buggy. Moon buggy. Yeah, and you see, you see the clips. The like the guy just recorded an album on the International Space Station. Oh, he recorded yeah. an album of, of acoustic guitar. I'm like, why are we paying for this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had oh, he had him in. Is that Chris? Yeah, Chris Hadfield had. Hadfield? Haddonfield. Haddonfield, yeah. He's Canadian. He, he was very cool. Oh. He's a very bright man, too. Very bright. But he it, talked about all the stuff that you have to go through as an astronaut physically to get to space, and just the odds are so astronomically against you getting into space because of all the medical shit that can go wrong. That you gotta pass. If you have a fucking the flu, you're not going. Like all this, anything that can shut a mission down. I bet he didn't have a bad elbow, Jim. Um, no, and if he did, they fixed it before he went, because anything that will fuck you up, man. They gotta make sure yeah, it's Yeah, but it's fascinating to read his book. All right, so, uh, he confronted, uh, Buzz Aldrin, the guy from Rage Against the Machine, about the moon landing being fake. I got into it with Buzz Aldrin five years ago. And Buzz, better watch it. This is a guy that once rode down Rodeo <laughs> with a shotgun. <laughs> this is a guy who confronts people. Uh, he confronted him five years ago at a John Cusack movie premiere. <laughs> He only starts shit at the dangerous places. Yeah. <laughs> this guy doesn't play games. I'm surprised he didn't roll through that movie premiere with a shotgun. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How annoying must that be to be Buzz Aldrin? You went to the moon, and some fucked up rock star walks up to you and like, it's a hoax, man. You know? Well, you're, we're not going to defend Buzz Aldrin. He, he's, he's he's not a particularly nice guy, but he ornery. absolutely went to the fucking yeah. moon. Sam, you're absolutely right, but yeah. you know we had our not our issues, but uh, <laughs> Buzz Aldrin. He was douchey to me on more than one occasion. <laughs> he makes us laugh. Oh yeah, he's a douche. However, I would still he would have to really he would have to slap me in the face for me to be rude to him because he's Buzz Aldrin. Yeah, yeah. he was in here. He's a little cunty, he's cranky, but uh, you know we were talking about something. He wrote a book about going to Mars. And um, I asked him, one of the questions I asked him was, uh, so what kind of like the mental taste testing you have to go through to go on that mission? Because that's like three years each way, I think. And he's like, uh, he got annoyed at the question. He's like, uh, well, let's not dilly-dally. I have to get over to CNN. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, fuck. <laughs> Just trying to help promote your fucking <laughs> shitty book. Because we try to do things a little differently here. We try to have conversations and yeah. stuff. And, he, and he, he just wanted to get out to get to CNN. We had interviewed well, him before. Dilly -dally. And I had met him at, at a separate occasion. He was never particularly pleasant. But again, he's Buzz Aldrin. So I was like, hey, you're right. I'm a dilly-dallying shitbird. <laughs> I'll shut up. You got to bow to Buzz Aldrin for what he has accomplished in he's, his life. He's contributed too much to the of species. Of course. You just, I'm in no position to fucking be a dick to that and I think guy. After, he's earned that right to be cranky. I think after you go up to the moon, too, you just don't want to tolerate humans in general. Why would he? I blink a lot, and I'm averagely, moderately successful. I have nothing to <laughs> offer Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> nothing of interest. He probably offer. sees it very differently yeah. when you're just looking at Earth from that uh, vantage point. A pale blue dot, as they say. <laughs> yes. yes. Puts everything in perspective, they say. Yes. Yep. A lot of these guys come back uh, changed people. They become very spiritual. Right. And they, they talk about how they just don't understand why we fight with each other on Earth when you realize how insignificant we are. Sure. And that's only from the moon's perspective. You go a little further out, then it gets completely ridiculous. Anyway, there was a bunch of people gathered around. This is uh, the guy from Rage talking about Buzz Aldrin. And I said, hey, I have a question. You have all these missions to the moon. How come there's no picture of the flags on the moon? The bassist said Aldrin stumbled for an answer. 
Uh, uh, so it gave him more confidence that the Apollo landing was bogus. So he stumbles for an answer. So this guy's like, ah, <laughs> yeah. uh, he gets all frustrated and says, I'm just trying to remember what they told me to say. That's what he said. Those were his, his exact words. And if you know Buzz Aldrin, that's exactly what he would say. Because he's sick of those stupid he's questions. He's probably making fun of the guy, and the guy didn't get it. I like that the Soviets didn't dispute the moon landing, but the basis for <laughs> Reagan <laughs> has figured it out. He cracked the conspiracy. Yeah, yeah, they should be the number one conspiracy guys, the Soviet Union. It yeah. would make us look horrible. Yeah, they, they would have jumped Mackie, on that. you're a smart guy. <laughs> and then he moves on... Uh, but uh, talking foreign policy ignited some of his rage, like ISIS. I don't believe ISIS is real, he said. He claimed that ISIS and its video depicting executions are elaborate, high, highly produced propaganda videos ordered by a global cabal. Is that how you say that? C-A-B-A-L? Cabal? Yeah, mm -hmm. So we could go drop bombs. There are some people that just... It's more comfortable for them to believe in conspiracy. It's... And tell it to the family of the fucking, uh, I forget his name, James, the guy who was beheaded, the reporter. Right. And there was, a, there was one of the guys who has been freed from ISIS, who actually saw this happen, or saw some of it happen. They're real. They're absolutely, I've seen enough videos of them burning people alive. That's another advantage you get when you watch some of these fucking horrible videos, is some dumbbell mm -hmm. that wants to tell you they don't exist. Yeah. They exist. Yeah. Yeah. Simple this as that. video, this, and they're not all hoaxes. There's not hoaxes of them hanging these men upside down and burning them alive. The reason that they don't show you the graphic beheading on ISIS is because they are marketing. They're brilliant marketing guys, and they want to keep it on YouTube and other social media outlets that would yank it for the violence. So they leave it on there, and they also think it's easier to probably get recruits without showing the graphic nature, just showing the power and the head. But when you watch someone's fucking head get sawed through. It's a different. Uh, it's a different animal. Yeah. It's a different thing than just seeing it being held. Absolutely. He continues with the ISIS thing. Uh, it's a bunch of shit. I don't believe that jihad, jihadi John beheading uh, videos. Uh, go look at those videos and study them and see if you don't think they're fake. Yeah, you do that. You 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 study them all. Make your brilliant decisions. He talks about the lizard people. Oh, good. On the lizard people running world governments, uh, I'm reading this call, I didn't even read it ahead of time, uh, cover-ups go so much deeper than just the U.S. government. It's the same people that put presidents in office all over the world. It's a global conspiracy of people whose names we'll never know, but they're in the one, they're the ones who really run the show uh, uh, because they're the ones with the deepest pockets. <laughs> sure. And they don't get cancer either, and they don't get, uh, they don't die of heart attacks, they don't get strokes. They're magic people, and they live in a magic land <laughs> where no one ever tells secrets and they just run the world <laughs> <laughs> on all to you he's got something to say about donald trump oh why wouldn't he he has united these racist people in yeah, america to We're focus racist. on immigration yes. and at the last minute mark my words he's going to drop out and he's going to hand the sword over to jeb and jeb will get all the supporters that trump uh, has that may be true That's... but there's no conspiracy there that's just because he's not going to win where are you at with the trump I think, I mean, that doesn't seem like he would give it to Jeb, of all people. It seems like he's calling Jeb boring. If anyone, maybe he'd give it to Fiorino or something. You think she has a shot? I think she does. She's rising in the polls. Yeah. She's like um, going away. I think it's sad. It's because she looks like Harry Dean Stanton. <laughs> and we all want a president who looks like Harry Dean Stanton. No, I think she, I think it's kind of sad that one soundbite kind of like shot her up in the polls. I mean, that's really what it was. I the think. Trump thing? Kind of calling her ugly? Yeah, and, and she'd be like, that. I think the women have, have heard what yeah. he said. And that, like, was like, it was a, she was been soaring ever since that. Yeah. That was a moment for her. Because she's the only person that made a point on him. Yeah. The rest of them are just fucking groveling idiots trying to get him to like them so he doesn't shit on them. Right. Yeah. And she just fucking smashed them because she's another CEO. Right. She yeah. She smashed them back. Yeah. On voting. Now, this is the Rage Against the Machine guy, right? We're still yep. there? Okay. Yep. I don't care whether a Republican or Democrat wins. The same shit's going to happen. That's why you'll never see me at the ballot box ever. Uh, I don't of, disagree with them. I'm kind of with them on this one. It's all bullshit. They're not the ones calling the shots. Whether it's the heads of the corporations or the military guys that have been in there for 30 years, there's no president coming in every four years and telling those motherfuckers what to do. Uh, I give them that one. Yeah. Got to give them that yeah, one. Partially. That was an easy one, though. Yeah. <laughs> and then on the moon landing. <laughs> an easy one. It's all bullshit. That's an easy stance. <laughs> on the moon landing, he continues. The one thing I always question, we put the flag on the moon. Why did we put a metal rod on the top of it? 
Uh, why wouldn't we just plant it into the moon's surface and have the astronaut pull it out and let it go, and we could watch it do its dance on the moon? There's no wind on the moon. Exactly. Would it be just floating a little bit, though? No, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be unfurled. No, I understand that, but he's saying, like... Maybe it would just float there. It's it's a metal. F- it's not a it's not a cloth flag. It's what what NASA said about that. I don't recall what kind of metal it's made out of though. But they, like it it looks like it's floating, but it does that on purpose. Like uh, because there's no there's no wind on the moon. It's got it's, if you add it up the moon's atmosphere, it's like two hundred pounds. The whole the whole atmosphere of the moon. So yeah, it would just be laying there. Mackie like, knows about space. Yeah, you know you know this, Sam. Uh, I know nothing about this. No, but this is his hobby. Oh this yeah, I know. Thing. I know that he's a he's a science guy. Oh yeah, sure. man, Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> <laughs> but his point is, if you don't plant it into the moon's surface, then it, it would float a little bit. Is that true, Joe Mackey? No, uh, you'd weigh one twelfth. You weigh one twelfth of what you weigh on. Oh, Earth I'd on love moon. to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but it still has gravity. Gravity still exists on the moon. Yeah. Uh, go By back. the way, the rage basis is right, though, because they had a very, very rebellious message, and they were silenced. Oh, that's right. They weren't. No one cared. <laughs> Say whatever you want. Right. Wow, it's interesting that this big world government, nobody shut them up. Boy, they're telling the truth about everybody, and nobody's telling them to be quiet. Yeah, yeah. we're on Viacom's networks tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we told everyone to shut up, except the big labels. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, go back to that moon landing thing. There was one more sentence in there. And then we can move on. Uh, let's see. So, top of it, why wouldn't we just plant on the moon surface and have the astronaut pull it out and let it go, and we could watch it do its dance on the moon? It would have been an, an image we couldn't have faked, and one that we would have never forgotten. I think the one that's up there is pretty iconic, and people. Yeah, we have the regolith from the moon too. Like we have samples of moon rocks. I mean, how do we get that? Ah, uh, meteorites that landed on Earth. Oh, that's a good point. From the Grand Canyon, Joe. All fake. Just fine. Who says they're from the moon? Yeah, exactly. Just finding rocks that look like they could have been from the moon. Yeah. Yes. So silly. It is silly. I think people. I, I think. What was the conspiracy? Oh, I watched something on nine eleven conspiracy on. Uh, and was it a disc- It was on Netflix, and it showed the conspiracy theorists, and then how they were, their, their theories were being tested. And oh, you can't melt steel. You can't do all this. And watching the tests that they conducted, and then watching the way the conspiracy guys reacted to it. It's just, it, it makes me dis- dislike them because mm-hmm. they don't look at evidence the way I look at evidence. Mm-hmm. Like, they're so married to the, I'm not married to the idea of Al-Qaeda doing it. I yes. really am not. I don't think the government's great. They're fucking shit. Maybe they did. But then you watch it, you're like, nah, there was Al-Qaeda. Yeah. They just they just look at it different, man. They want the conspiracy so bad. Of course, yeah. They're, they're almost like uh, it's almost like like atheists who are like so certain they act like they're more open minded, but in some ways they're more closed minded. Yeah. yeah, people Plus, they're they're married to the idea behind what they think. So it's yeah. not they, the idea of it being disproven is it's too big for them. Right. Plus, steel is you have to melt steel to make us sure stuff out of steel. It me- it melts. Yeah, of course it does melt. Nothing doesn't melt. <laughs> I mean, I feel kind of silly saying that, but, but it's true. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's a good point. But they, they they showed how it weakens, and it just you know it just weakens, and it, they made perfect sense. I, I love that. That's the conspiracy. It's like no one can believe a full jet line, a jetliner full of fuel can knock down a building. I like I'd that, buy that seems like a pretty big collision. Like they, they, I could see the conspiracy coming from who flew the jetliners or that, right. but it's weird that the conspiracy is like, oh no, that that building would be fine. It's like, yeah. I, well, I, I the mean, way things fall, you know, yeah, that's yeah. The, exactly. And buildings aren't that impressive. They're mostly made out of air. There's more air in buildings than anything else. They're pretty hollow. They're not as strong as you would think they are. I want to build a building that only has a few feet to walk around in a solid brick building that can never be knocked <laughs> oh down. God, that it's got like six square feet per floor. Six? Yes. <laughs> That'd be a, a waste. Like a yes. pyramid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's just solid brick. <laughs> how, how tall is the building? Two stories. Two stories. I know you thought I was going to go high there, yeah, I so I ruined really, it. Really I ended high. the bid immediately. <laughs> Two stories. Um, 
It's not that tall. Nope. Brianna is saying some stuff today, too. Hopefully it's fuck my ass, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> had higher hopes for that. <laughs> no, I, I, I couldn't laugh because soon as you said ass with her, that those ass pictures. It's were in the, the post, right? With the photographers behind her getting the shot. Oh, my God. Drives me the, let's show Joe Mackey. I want to see if Joe Mackey finds this attractive. She did this photo spread. Uh, for I think like a French magazine, it is ridiculous. I don't think it made the post, guys. Hold on. If you go to images, I, it'll be one that pops up. She's on all fours, and there's only and uh, actually I don't think there's anyone behind her. But you're just imagining what's there, Joe Mackey. You know what I mean? That whole area is just there and open. <laughs> we'll find it. It has stopped the show. Mm -hmm. All right, if you find it, let me uh, talk about Rihanna, and then I'm, you'll find it. I'm trying to remember what magazine it was in. But uh, ex-NAACP leader Rachel Dolezal, remember her? Oh, yeah. The the white woman who was saying that she was black. And yes. she didn't really back down from that point. Uh, <laughs> is a hero to Rihanna. Rihanna has an opinion few have publicly expressed since a scandal brought down uh, Rachel there. Uh, about lying about her race. The singer supporting Rachel Dole is all for a wildfire of conversation she ignited about racial perceptions. She said uh, in an interview for Vanity Fair's latest cover, I think she was a bit of a hero because she kind of flipped on society a little bit. Uh, is it such a horrible thing that she pretended to be black? 27-year-old Rihanna explained. I don't know if it makes you a hero. I don't think it makes you a hero. I think it's kind of a bad thing, yes. Well, let's be honest. Uh, Rihanna's judgment has not proven to be terrific. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to say about that one. Yeah. Yes. She yeah. went back out with a guy who fucking beat the shit out of her. So her idea of who a hero is is not point. particularly, uh, you know. Good point. I did go back with Chris Brown uh, for a little bit there. Yeah. Oh, man, we can't find those photos. What did the internet take them down for some reason? Yeah, whatever. Where was it taken? It was some magazine. It was a big thing for a little while. Maybe uh, it was her butt. Go down a little bit. Yeah, that there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you think, Joe Mackey? Well, she did not get her money's worth on those shorts. Mm. <laughs> 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 what about the one on the left where there's, the shorts are obviously gone Jesus. and she's on all fours and uh, it's from, uh, we're looking at her face. Oh, well, she's... But you can see, you can uh, just imagine what's going on back there with that ass, right, Joe? Well, uh, it's just probably, you know... A bit drafty. I don't. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess you could. I mean, sure. sure I think why? they're great. I heard the Rage Against the Machine frontman said that they don't exist. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an, uh, that's a good view. She's an attractive lady. She sure is. She always looks like she's tired, though. <laughs> Rihanna. Yeah. Always looks like that's a sultry look, look, Joe. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Bedroom Those are eyes, bedroom yeah. bedroom eyes. Yeah. I like yeah. I like ladies who look like they've had a couple of cups of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Wide awake, huh? Yep, ready to get to work. <laughs> ready to get to work. Get their good night's sleep. Because <laughs> uh, they're a little tired. That means they were getting some things done in the middle of the night, right, Joe? Mm -hmm. That goes against your principles we learned earlier. <laughs> well, like I say, I don't want to. I mean, I, I'm uh, not trying to judge people or anything like that. It's just, uh, you know, teach their own. You just do it differently. Yeah. Sure. yeah they, they, brought, they threw away the mold. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just talking gibberish over here. Don't, no, don't you're mind me. Come on, Joe, stop it. You're not. Uh, <laughs> perfect sense. He is making perfect sense. Yes, I didn't know you're a big science fan. I like it too. I like sci-fi and I like space. Uh, I'm, I'm disappointed that we haven't been to Mars yet. Uh, well, we're getting there. Yeah, but uh, it's frustrating what's happening with NASA right now because private companies are building. Oh, this is boring. I, this is probably for your listeners. I don't know if I. Private, private companies, companies are building. Are they're, they're building like SpaceX is building a Falcon Heavy, a heavy lift rocket, and uh, and uh, we really don't need to have NASA developing their own. But they're. It's almost like a jobs program, where we're we're p putting money into the space launch system, that we're not. We don't really need. We could have two launches with the SpaceX heavy, heavy rocket that could do the same thing. Mm. But I, I don't know. It it just seems like we. There's no long term plan. Every time a new president gets in, we're going to reset. Like, and uh, 
all the stuff that they were working at. There was uh, the Aries and Constellation rockets uh, under Bush, and once Obama came president, he's like, "No, that's that's gonna that's out. We're gonna do this space launch system." And the next president's gonna be like, "You know what? This space launch system is costing a lot." And he'll cancel that. So and it'll be private industry that'll pretty much do it. Pro- probably, but it's also the starts and stops are caught or her fortune. Like NASA will spend a billion dollars and then cancel something. Right. And it's just like, yeah. It might be our best shot, though, private industry. Yeah. Taking over that whole thing. Oh, uh, it'll be cheaper anyway. Yeah. You know, let them do it. Richard uh, Branson's going up into space for space tourism. That man's a genius. He sold people tickets to space f- when he doesn't have a spaceship yet. Yeah. Like I could, he's that's already collecting amazing. money, right? Yeah. Well, it's built though, isn't it? Uh, they are test flying it. It's test flying, but he's been selling this since two thousand and seven, yeah. and it just keeps getting pushed back and back and back. And the you know the one just crashed, so it's not. It's who, oh, right. ever what happened? Work? Did it? I don't know if they ever figured out whether it was pilot error. The pilot or me- died, right? Yeah, one mm-hmm. of the one of the two pilots died. Uh, if they found out if it was pilot error or a mechanical problem. I can't believe people would. I'm so scared of like commercial flights. You know, it's unbelievable. It's some people who just, I mean, the idea of going to Mars to me is unbelievable. <laughs> well, the Mars, once you're in space, it's probably safe because you're just, you're just moving at a consistent speed. You're not going to hit anything. How do you know there's no debris, though? Yeah, that's, that's pretty bold. Like, this guy, how do you know there's not like a fucking 30 foot rock flying through the air somewhere? Something. Or, or a pebble traveling at 18 kilometers a yeah, second. Yeah, that would blow right through right. the, uh, as we say, fuselage. Fuselage. Yeah, a pebble would do it. Yeah. We, uh, I forgot, we we found the Buzz Aldrin Club. I think it's worth playing uh, these guys, the Dilly Dally. Oh, it makes, that, me, I didn't, it makes I, me laugh every time. I don't remember hearing that, yes. Uh, Travis, have you got I that, hope I remembered please. it correctly. What kind of psychological testing, too? Like, there's got to be some intense stuff these guys have to go through they, for that type yeah, of... Yeah, they were telling me uh, that we got to rush out of here when I'm through oh. to get to CNN, so let's not uh, oh. Dilly Dally along if we're... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got CNN to do, huh? Yeah, yeah. well, like, like, like guy. Because I was reading some, I'm reading something about. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I hate to dilly dally, but I'm, I'm reading something about how the 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 psychological oh, challenge, sure. Jim. Is that I like great? Who, whoever said busy guy right there. Was that you? Uh, Probably Anthony. Anthony. Yeah, this is yeah. hilarious. This is a busy guy. Busy <laughs> just guy. totally <laughs> shut him down. Yeah. <laughs> he's an or so ornery. Yeah. I'll talk to him every time, though. Of course. <laughs> Buzz all not because what American he's done, icon. just because of what kind of person he is. Yeah. Just, I find oh, it God. great. I would, yeah, I, I would always be, you know, pleasant to. Of course, you got it. It was very funny that he basically told me to shut the fuck up with my boring Don't question. Dilly dally. He's told by the fucking the guy who's done more for space than anybody on the planet. He recognized that that question had nothing to do with his book, and he shut it down. He didn't feel like getting into it right now. I was boring him. He didn't want to dilly dally. <laughs> he didn't want to dilly dally. Get to the point. He basically wanted to say, "Get to the point." Blinking radio, nothing. All right. He's right. I was trying to sound smart with your Ask, questions. Asking him a question about what it takes to be an astronaut is so, such a waste of time for his space book. Yeah. <laughs> How could I be an astronaut? Too? Ah, you got to work hard and go to school. Thank you, Buzz. <laughs> Simple answers he wants. Dilly Dally is like old man shut of the fuck up. Of course it is. <laughs> we all know Exactly. That. What happened? There was a Negro Dilly Dally. <laughs> I got it, Buzz. From the old school. Got it. All right, we, uh, why don't we take a break, regroup a little bit, get into some other things. Uh, we're hanging with uh, Sam Morell, who's got a bunch of things happening. Yeah, I got my uh, my album is uh, 23rd uh, on iTunes uh, called Class Act. My special is on Comedy Central, midnight on October 24th. I'm doing a show at the Village Underground to release it on the 13th. Uh, Joe's on it. A lot of great comics are on it. Uh, Village Underground, 8.30 p.m. on October 13th. Awesome. And then, and then a show in the festival in November, so look out for that. Oh, good, man. Look yeah. out for Sam Morell. Very funny comic. Yes. And Joe Mackey, uh, just killing it for the first time on our show. Joe, what do you got going on? Seattle. Seattle, I'm at the parlor uh, this coming Thursday through Saturday. And October 21st, I'm uh, at the casino in Sioux City, Iowa. Uh, so, Are oh, you a boy. gambler, Joe? Uh, well, uh... I mean, I'll I'll eat a convenience store hot dog, but that's as far as I'll go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're that's not right. A gambler. That's I, right. Yeah, I'm not much of a gambler. Because you you said it earlier that you're a bit on the cheap side, so if, so that gambling doesn't entice if you. If Casino can afford to build a fake New York. They're, the odds are probably against me winning money. <laughs> 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 and you know that, so you'd rather keep your money. Yeah, it's like oh, they they're wasting time on this giant thing of fountains. So because because that's how much money. People lose that corporations are like, you know what? We need a fountain that like dances. A dancing fountain. You're right. Synchronized to music. Yeah. And lights. 
It's pretty impressive, though. Yeah, it really makes there. me want to go to Vegas. I got food poisoning in one hotel because I ate seafood, which is surprising that seafood wouldn't be fresh in a desert. <laughs> Fucking dope I am. But I was really awful. I hear they fly it in day of, though. Yeah, that's what they, well, of course they're going to tell you. They're not going to say, yeah, it's been here since last Thursday. <laughs> right, we're just trying They to... do tell you that, and I ate it. And they didn't fly it in day of. How sick. Unless it, unless it died of cancer. It was just <laughs> sick to begin with. How sick. I was on the uh, with my ex-girlfriend at the time. She had caught me dirty texting, and ooh, was she hot under the collar. So I'm like, let's go to Vegas, hon. I was on the I fucked up apology thing, and uh, she was nice to me. I was vomiting and shitting for 24 hours. But, uh. but it didn't ruin our trip. We went out. We, you know, it was like one night into the early the next night, so we still went out and had dinner the following night. But she was nice to me through. Well, I was terribly sick, though. Multiple times uh, per hour on the bowl? Yes. Oh, that oh, was the vomiting worst. Vomiting terribly. That was the worst. And it was the seafood. <laughs> Too bad. It was a nice hotel. I don't even know if I got it from the hotel, but... Hmm. Whatever. All right. I'll be in Irvine this weekend. Starting uh, Thursday night? Come on out, gang. Thursday. Now I'm still on Colin <laughs> Quinn's Twitter thing. <laughs> Thursday night or Friday? Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. One show, two show, two show, no shows. There you have it. We'll be back. We're back. And Sam Morell and Joe Mackey for the first time on the show. You're a little chilly, Joe. You put your jacket on. Oh. I was, too. Yeah. Yeah. Got a little sweatshirt on. Cold in here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Sam, too. Oh, I the just, whole gang is little, chilly. A little nippy. You're, Instead of turning the heat up, we all put our coats on. How cute. You're not nervous about uh, your mom hearing this, are you, Joe? Oh, it'll it'll be okay. <laughs> it'll, it'll blow over. You know, Does I she just... know that you never had your cock sucked? Oh, I, you know, I, I just, uh, I don't think she liked me talking about stuff like, that. <laughs> you know, uh, my, my parents are kind of old school. Uh, yeah. I, my mom's pretty progressive. I don't think she wants to hear about me getting my dick sucked. Yeah, I, I think that's across the board. <laughs> I don't think the parents really want to know about that stuff. So I, I'd I probably can like understand. to know that he's sticking with the, uh, you know, with with the, with the message though. I can tell you this, Joe. That. Your next appearance will be much better. We oh. won't, we won't grill you like this. We're just trying to get to know you. I find it oh, interesting. No, I, I, I think I, Joe's. I see Joe. I know him. We've eaten yeah. together, but I've never knew any of this stuff about him. It's very interesting. Thirty six year old virgin. Well, it's tough to talk to. You know, uh, like I see famous comics all the time, and like sometimes I'm like, well, they probably don't want to be bothered. You know, so it's like I don't want to. I see comics go up to, to, to famous guys, like, especially younger, like, amateur comics, and they try to, like, schmooze, and it's like, I almost feel like it seems like they want something. Mm. And I don't want to be that guy. I mean, I was at the comic strip one time, and Chris Rock was in there, and this comic, I don't want to say his name, like, it's a bit of a social climber. It's like, he wants What's to get- What's his first name? Oh, he, I don't, I can't even say that, uh, cause you, oh. you know who it was. What's his like, first initial? Is it, is it uh, it's, it's, uh, it starts with a C. I mean, uh, I'll write it on Colin. the Colin. No. <laughs> oh, you, Colin Quinn. You and Colin <laughs> Quinn. Hey, Chris, good job on SNL. <laughs> so it's like, I just feel like you should, you should speak when spoken to a little bit until you're... Yeah, I have the same mindset. Yeah. It's, it's a guy, I don't bother, I try not to bother people that are, you know, way established in the game like that. If you walk up to any comedian and say, hi, I'm 36 and I'm a virgin, they'll welcome you at their table. <laughs> I want to hear your story. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, it, you don't want to just try to be on and... I... I don't know. Maybe it's more in my head than anything else. Maybe comedians guys... love when you go up and do bits to them. That's the best oh, way to meet okay. a guy. <laughs> uh, I'll bring my notebook next time. You walk right up, sit down next to a guy like Seinfeld. They go, you know, it's a funny thing happened. I was running late in the damn subway. What's with these announcements? <laughs> Can't even hear them. <laughs> Jerry, hey, Jerry go crazy. Have you ever noticed? <laughs> yeah, Jerry. Jerry, you ever notice how they don't the mics aren't clear on the subway? You probably go, oh, hey, I did, but that's a funny observation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're all, you're all right with your mom if you heard this. Oh, uh, yeah, you're a good boy. Yeah. You know. Very dutiful boy. Yep. We, we think you ate pussy, but you didn't really answer that question. Yeah, she know, mom knows you like it bald. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. You did say that, but so, that's okay. Yeah, you're either that's hygienic fine. or you're a great babysitter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why were you looking at, Deb, uh, what's her name, Demi Lovato's uh, pictures, E-Rock? You have, a, you have a problem with this? No, not at all. Oh, you think they're great, right? No, I was saying, screw Rihanna, look at this thing that went over the, uh, came up over the weekend. She's thick. 
Oh, oh she's hot, dude. Oh, oh you're, she's, really she's fucking oh my juicy. God, what a, that's a caboose. That's a big one. <laughs> that's a nice, raw, nice deep crack. That's a big one. <laughs> she's phenomenal. She's very, very pretty. <laughs> Your nose would totally disappear in that rump. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, Jimmy does Not like a deep Jew nose. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's all right. <laughs> fucking face first in that hiney. Holy <laughs> mackerel. <laughs> caboose, rump, and hiney. It's like the most adorable terms. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Joe, would you get in that uh, hiney there and give it a good cleaning? Oh, yeah. I would. I would go on a date with her under the right circumstances. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what are the right circumstances? Yeah. She says yes, or he has a gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, ju I just can't be buried in the same cemetery. I think those are tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Look at her. Look at how fucking wide her cheeks are. That's a deep crack. I think you would get rid of Holy your virginity in that, right there, Joe Mackey. Who is she? She's a very attractive lady. I will. She's I will, a singer, pop yeah. singer. The last one though, she's showering with her clothes on. That was. It's, it could not look less natural. Yeah. Look at how fucking wide the cheeks are. Oh, oh, my yeah, God, yeah. you open that up, that crack just opens. She's sitting there, and the cheeks are separated by about a good nine inches. That's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what song does she sing? I have no idea. Mac Mackie, you think you'll ever get in a, in a, well, in an ass? I, I... Oh, he reaches for water. <laughs> what part of a woman do you whack off looking at? Is it the ass? Is it the breasts? Like, if you have to look at a sexual part in pornography, what is it? It's not just the face. Yeah, what's your favorite part? To sexualize on a woman. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't. I haven't really thought about it all that much. They I don't really like eyes and a nice face. Oh, uh, I you jerk off to a nice smile. No, I. Are you I a boob man? I just can't. You know, I just don't want to talk about this kind of stuff because, like, I mean, you know, oh boy. You what's guys the really physical? Me. What's the physical feature on a gal that will most get your attention besides a face? The the more the more sensual aspect. Yeah. Oh, I guess. Um. Ah. Uh, I guess r nice legs are great. Sure. Um, Harry, Harry legs or? Oh no, I like a nice, nice shave, right? Yeah, nice, nice and, and smooth. You get shiny. you get some nair and you you take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if they still make nair. Uh, no, I'm not. A, I, uh, I don't mean, like feet. Feet are gross. I mean, I don't. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I don't get that people. You like a nice bottom on a girl? Oh yeah, definitely, of course. A, what? Cab a caboose. I mean, let's <laughs> let's not use the the. the s what else don't you get? I heard that. What don't you get? Yeah, yeah. pussy. Oh no, feet. you don't. You don't it's get. Like, why would I be into feet? Why? I'm with you, Joe. Yeah, I don't right, get. Right, I, 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 don't, I don't get. Everyone's the foot got fetish. their thing. Yeah. Okay, I get it. I but it's a real thing. Yeah, People really get all like try to like suck on a toe. Sometimes I'm like, why the fuck am I doing this? You know, like in theory it sounds great, and then you do it, and you're like, it's just a foot. That's smells. how I feel at dinner. Why am I doing this? When I'm sucking a foot, everything feels right. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm like, oh yeah, this is why I did that. It's like in feet. Like my feet aren't that sensitive. I would just feel awkward if someone was. Well, yeah, your guys. Eric, don't go anywhere. I, I didn't forget. We're going to uh, the Mars thing in a second, but uh, you know, I want to make Joe Mackey sweat a little more. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious as to what, mm, what part of a girl you look you. like. Do you look up big boob porn or oral porn? Or like, you know, you good question. question. You know, question. Uh, well, let's let's go with a presumption that I don't look up porn. But okay, if you did, but if I did, um, <laughs> I I like. I, you know, some guys like they like thicker women. Some guys like thin women. I really can find both attractive. I don't, I don't know if that's sure. Some guys like, you know. Well, when is it too big? When is a woman too big you know, for you, I, Joe? Good yeah. question. <clears throat> when a woman Which has is like considered giant, handicapped. Giant. When like I don't like giant fake boobs. Sure, I agree. Okay. I think it. I'm, it's I'm just, with you again, Joe. I can't get over that. It's like there's like plastic that's weird and it doesn't look it doesn't look they don't look the same shape as you like nice natural, natural like, teardrop breasts nice heavy ones you like, a, you like a nice heavy breast fake boobs weighty fake boobs and fake lips don't look Agreed. anything close to real like uh, why would they they look great they in a sweater though joe yes they do yeah, yeah I, I guess just keep I guess the so. sweater on if yeah. you ever yeah. come upon that what about like space themed porn Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, we can keep the studio cool here, guys, because it is, <laughs> it is heating up. Uh, now, Joe's probably likes violent porn. That's probably what I just want to say it. He probably likes the most fucking reprehensible Jesus. porn. It's called uh, Puncher in the Teeth Porn. What? I've never heard of that. Joe's this nice guy, but he can't get off unless there's blood in the video. <laughs> um, Eric wanted to get in on the Mars discussion, Eric. Oh, but he thinks you're talking about the engineer. 
<laughs> I was with you. Wow. We have an engineer named oh. Mars. Don't help him, Justin. Even Trav. That, you, Iraq's right. Let me just sit in it. Iraq, when Trav, when you make eye contact out of the other room. <laughs> I'm here to help. Eric? Um, you were talking about the space stuff uh, and private industry. you, you got to check out Elon Musk and SpaceX and everything he's doing. I don't know who he is. I've, I've seen he, the He uh, invented smells. the uh, Tesla, the electric car. <laughs> yeah, he's a Tesla guy. <laughs> he made a ton of money off of PayPal. Wow. Yeah. Sold it. Yeah. Probably from me. And, uh, and now he's worth billions, and he started Tesla. Uh, he's got a solar power company, and he's got... Uh, He's got SpaceX. Solar power. He's also trying to make the Hyperloop uh, in California. It, uh, it creates a vacuum, and you can just shoot a vehicle very quickly uh, in a vacuum. Wait, so he started ah. as a, he invented PayPal? And then I, sold I it? believe it was yeah. PayPal. And he made billions, not millions, well, billions like off a, that. Yeah, around a billion. So we had a Hyperloop. Would suck. It's it's common like the thing that they would use in the bank. Yeah. Right. To, to, yep. To, to, to send the, the it, like the, to courier the package to the teller. Um, this would be an air-free thing that sucks your car through or sucks another uh, vehicle through? It's, it has like a subway train inside. You suck all the air out. It creates a vacuuming. And with the note, with no air resistance, you can shoot something really, really quickly. Oh, but in the train, you have air. So, in the train, you have sure, air. Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, but what the, does the that tube do to that it travels in is, is... What does that do to the human body, though? Well, you're, you're in a compressed... You're, you're in a pressurized uh, cabin. Like being in space. So you're fine. You won't feel it, really? No, no, no. How no. far along is this type of test? Fifty feet. This seems like a lot, big waste of money to go fifty yeah. feet quickly. <laughs> I, I, you got to wait an hour, though. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they're trying to build prototypes, but it's dec It's probably decades off. But he's trying to do that. That's amazing. Yeah. Wait. I wish we had just had better trains like they have elsewhere. Yeah. That would be a good start. The bullet train's not even attractive anymore, though. You want to get into the new technology. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, this cabbie, by the way, mentioned the bullet train last night. And we were driving, and he goes, uh, yeah, you know, the Japan, because our technology, those Japan, the Japanese, they got uh, trains that go uh, 1,500 miles an hour. I'm like, really? And this is when I really got interested in the conversation. Yeah. I'm like, they do. And he goes, yeah. And, we're, and then a minute later, I'm like, so how fast do those things go? Like 350 miles an hour? And he goes, yeah, I don't know, but I mean, they make our trains look slow. It's 200 miles an hour. It's how fast they go. It's a big difference. It's a tremendous, tremendous difference. The tremendous train difference. goes Mach 2. It yeah. fly off the track in like the slightest curve. Yeah, he was basically saying that uh, trains go faster than planes, almost <laughs> twice as fast as planes. Ridiculous. Well, what else about Elon? Well, um, he was on Stephen Colbert last week, and uh, he was also talking about how he could uh, re-terraform Mars to make it livable like Earth. He wants to launch nuclear bombs in the atmosphere uh, above Mars on the polar caps to cause a greenhouse effect and uh, rejuvenate the atmosphere so we can use the planet. Something sounds wrong with that. Something flawed. You think? Yeah, there's nuclear bomb stuff in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Great atmosphere. How are you going to bring Not. that shit in? Yeah. He wants to use the bombs to make sort of like a second sun. To help melt everything on the planet, and eventually it'll. How long is that going to take? I have no idea. Well, that's uh, good. At least a few months, I think. Talk about fucking with nature. New nuclear weapons to melt it. What did he, what did he fucking see that uh, Total Recall? Or worked with Genesis in Star Trek Three. Oh, he's yeah. a dope. This guy. <laughs> he's a dope. Worth billions. <laughs> he's worth thirteen billion dollars. He's a rich dope. <laughs> you stop it. So Big deal. PayPal. He helps me jerk off online. Thank you, Elon. <laughs> I was just having fun with the space. Well, yeah. he's, trying the space. To, he's trying to uh, fund everything possible to get to Mars to do everything he wants to do. Right now, his SpaceX program is uh, the rockets are delivering stuff to the space center, and he said in about two, three years, he can shuttle astronauts to and from. Uh, the planet to the space station, and then he wants to do all this Mars stuff. Wow, that's uh, I'm sure he'll get some of this stuff done, right? How old is he? Is he a younger guy? 17. I think he's 17. In his 40s? 40s, all right. Very good. 44. 44. Wow, thirteen billion at 44. Uh, oh, I'd get into a little trouble with that money. <laughs> <laughs> what, what else is uh, going on today? I don't know. I'm just thinking of what I would do with thirteen billion dollars. What would you do? I don't. I would literally. No, really. You think I'd be here for thirteen billion? <laughs> <laughs> I would buy this place and then just do my own show every day of nothing. <laughs> five minutes of nothing. Twenty three hours and fifty five minutes of silence. <laughs> would you? Would you keep this whole um, complex? 
the whole all these floors and stuff. Yes, I but would. You would kick everyone out. Uh, no, I would actually keep it as it is, and I would just walk through once in a while. Yeah, and I'd pull down my pants, and I would just take a shit in the floor in front of everybody, <laughs> and then let them sue me. <laughs> just, two hundred thousand. You could do that so much cheaper with just Periscope. <laughs> 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 I'm, not, I'm not gonna talk anymore. Oh, please, it's wonderful. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what else is going on out there, really. Well, we're all just chit chatting. Yeah, sure. We're all just enjoying each other's company, I think. That's what's important. Well, since ISIS is fake, nothing. <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing, uh, nothing to be afraid of anymore. Nope. Isn't it silly how people just don't want to believe? Like, I, I could almost understand if you have a moon landing thing, or even 9-11, or JFK, those are popular conspiracies. But to think that ISIS doesn't exist, and that that reporter's head wasn't cut off. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Say that to the family's face. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's the guy's dead. I think they completely believe. Plus, we, we were bombing those countries before ISIS. Yeah. I mean, if we, Al-Qaeda existed, I, I mean, I, I think the Iraq war is a bad idea, but still, I mean... We didn't have to invent ISIS to drop bombs on Yemen and the Middle East. Or know, does, the whole argument doesn't make a whole lot of sense. No, it's just silly goosish. Mm. Yes, it is. What, is. what is this video? Japanese man sets room ablaze, catches it all on internet live stream. Yeah. What is this? What was he trying to do? The big oops. You want to see a big oops, Joe Mackey? Let's 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 have it. Have a look see. All right, let's have a look see. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's eleven minutes. さんが、あれ、歌ってるで、ちょっとでしょ。で、これが <laughs> I don't know. We're just listening to a Japanese guy. We don't need the volume for this. Why would why would you make writing so complicated? Why would you make your quote letters so complicated? Oh the fire just started. What was he doing? Was he just trying to light a match to smoke? Sounds like a little girl voice. No, Corey, why would this is the kinkiest porn, porn ever? Everything <laughs> on the desk is in flames. Behind him, he, he can't has even no see idea. it. Well, it has no clue yet. What is he doing with his feet? I don't know. Oh, it's his girlfriend. Now he's trying to put out the fire. What the hell? It's a it's a garbage, garbage bag, bag that's completely on fire. He moves it behind him. Yeah. Against is the this wall. fake or real? He's not panicking, so... Uh, He's trying to put it out with a big box. That's always the best way to put out a fire. <laughs> cardboard. <laughs> Why isn't he panicking though? That I don't know. I, maybe he's trying, and he's dabbing it out. Get some water, you dope. Now he runs out of the room. Now yeah. it's completely out of and control. And he closes the door. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, the cardboard. It's just on. Ah, that's his girlfriend. She's like, your house is burning. Uh, so, uh, he ran out of the room, and now the fire is getting really bad. And she's just watching this through What, do they cam. leave the house? How about you get a big fucking... What is he doing? The fire's <laughs> completely <laughs> out of control now. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like six feet tall. Hey, f fast forward. Through this. This Wait, awesome. here he comes. Here he comes. All right, is he finally coming back? Yeah. <laughs> it has one pan of water? A small pan of water. He, he was out of the room for place, three minutes. So yeah, what did he go borrow? He ran down to Costco and bought one? <laughs> the smoke Oof, filling good the Good improv, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps coming back with just a little... Now he found a bigger pan of water. Okay. And that didn't do the job. <laughs> oh, boy, that fire is still raging. You can only see the glow of it. <laughs> yeah. But why is that fucking room is a smoking mess? <laughs> oh my god, he doesn't even know how to throw water properly no, on the he's fire. he's just kind of throwing it, and he is really in panic mode now. <laughs> yeah, he's he's sort of missing the fire. And uh, now the room is uh, completely smoked out. Oh, this is awesome. Poor fucking bastard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dummy. And that's it? Yeah, he tried to put it out with with four. What happened? Four pans of water? No, that was uh, kerosene. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh. The smoke is filling the room. Oh, uh, now he had a bail. He had a bail on the whole situation. That, his house burned. Wow, that sucks. What does the, the story say? Eric, read that for me. Yeah, what do we got? 12 minute video viewed by more than 4 million people. After using lighter fluid to refuel the lighter, he wipes away excess fluid with tissue. Oh, it was lighter it, fluid. Okay. Placed it into a basket beside him. 
Unfortunately, the man then attempts to light a match, but accidentally sets the entire matchbox on fire, and from that moment, chaos ensues. Uh, he dropped the match into a lighter. Oh, lighter fluid tissues, which went up. Oh, that's why it was so bad. He moved the ignited bag to the opposite corner, and he created an even bigger blaze because uh, he tried to snuff it out with water, cardboard boxes, and a blanket. A blanket? A blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You got a fucking bad idea. He, then he uh, cut up some newspapers. Uh, he, uh, well, he finally... Uh, he just has to bail on the whole situation. This is how this ends. Wow. What a dope. I still think it might be fake, but I guess it was. There was a little girl's voice in there, though. That yeah, that was on the like computer. a robotic voice uh, okay. to me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Robotic. Yeah. yeah, robotic. How do you know? It sounded, I, it sounded like a robotic voice. It sounded fake, the voice. Where he was talking to it somebody. Was, like, <laughs> you know, run, there's a fire. Something like that. I love the last sentence in the story. <laughs> It is unknown if anyone was injured in the fire. <laughs> That's a great report right there. More well, important for it to go it's viral. It's more important that there was this hilarious <laughs> guy Why don't you, why don't you call the fire department? They'll tell you if anyone <laughs> yeah. was injured yeah. in this fire. <laughs> I don't know, a lot of a lot of strange videos come uh, come out from Japan and stuff. I yeah. question all of them. Yeah, so many of them are fake. I think so many of these weird moments we see are just fake. It's like the we, moon landing, and then we don't speak their language, <laughs> so then we can't really follow along to see if their acting's bad. How do you try to put out a fire with a fucking cardboard box and a blanket? <laughs> I don't know. Like, there's nothing on earth worse. He also went out and got some dry leaves. <laughs> it's a fucking. Uh, wow! Fire oh, the fighter shit on himself. Yeah. What? What was this UFC? No, 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 no. Okay. MMA. It's this is a smaller looking octagon. MMA either, fighter it? gets uh, choked out and shits himself. We'll put all these videos up on our stuff. <laughs> He's getting pounded, ground and pound, hammer, hammer fisted, basically. These are not the. Oh, oh. boy! He's out. I love that there's a pop-up ad for Tony Bennett during this. <laughs> yes. Speaking of shit. Yeah, speaking of that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh it's dripping it's in the ring. It's pants. dripping out of his shorts. How embarrassing. Oh. It's dripping. I think the ref said, I ain't dealing with that. Did you see that? Yeah. Yep. He waved it off like, I ain't dealing with that. And they're all, people are looking at him. Oh. Oh. He's wow. leaving a trail. Oh, <laughs> no. Puddles. She made me stop circling the ring. Yeah. In that moment, he's like, where do I go? There's shit coming out of me. <laughs> I'm in a round, a light-colored, floor round circle in front of 15,000 people. There's at least 12 <laughs> spots. Dude, it's a liquid shit leaking, and he's walking in circles going, oh, God, please let there be a drain. I can stand over until it stops. It takes oh. him a very long time to get away. Because well, he's, he's stunned, too. He just yeah. got knocked out. He got knocked did, did out. You, do you need to submit? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh. Oh my God! I'm gonna throw up. She says, "Yeah." There's a lot of shit. Oh, oh, do it. Oh, don't do it. Oh, oh, oh God! It looks like his intestines flew out. Yeah. How embarrassing. He's just got to go. Yep, I got to go to the back. He's got to walk by the hot green girl. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me get my look, baby at the back, look at the back of his pants. Wait. Oh, oh it's down his, down his legs. Oh, no. He's going to walk all the way through the audience. It's a small. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Joe, you never shit your pants, right? No. Uh, Good for you. I never fought in a cage either, but. <laughs> oh, man. God, that's fucking embarrassing. Yeah, you guys. can see it in the beginning of the video when he's, uh, uh well, it only has 955,000 views. He uh, turns over, you can see the butterscotch color light shit. That's a, because he has on dark, like black shorts, which would be a perfect for a shit, but not that kind. It fell out of his shorts. I shit my pants once. I was in second grade and I was just stuck in horrible traffic on the school bus and I just went. And, and some kid's like, did you shit your pants? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, no, you didn't. And then he grabbed my butt and felt it. And he goes, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> why would he, he grab did. your butt? I think he thought I was a liar. <laughs> why, look, look at that screen cap. Why would you make up. that up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, oh. he was already shitting his pants before he got choked out. Yeah. Look yeah. At that. As he was getting he, choked he, out, he his probably little tummy. Was sick to begin with. His little oh. tummy was getting squeezed in the, in the turn. Oh. Mm. He shit his pants. Bad seafood at the casino. <laughs> yeah, his little tummy. His little tummy was upset. <laughs> I remember I was in third grade. I had such a crush on this girl, Kelly. And I had shit my pants brutally. And I had sat in it so it was like cold uh -huh. and, and matted against my underwear and little hiney. And she goes, uh, 
did you, we were all standing waiting to leave, and she goes, did you go poops in your pants? <laughs> and it's the first time I ever tried sarcasm. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did it work? No, because no. we all knew I was telling the truth. Yeah. I had brutally shot my... One time I was walking to school, and I was on Newton Street, which is where Bill D'Angelo lived, my, one of my best friends growing up. And I had to shit, so I was stiff leg walking, and I pinched off a little piece, and it rolled down my leg, <laughs> and I kicked it out my pants, and Bill saw it, and we all left. Oh. <laughs> we all left. <laughs> like, dude, I uh, shit my pants a what, lot. What was your plan if it wasn't a little piece? Yeah, I didn't mean for it to come out, dude. It started. I was just turtling. I hated to shit at people's houses. I have weird duty issues, and um, it just the piece broke off as I was holding it in. I didn't get it far enough. You know what I mean? It was like I was trying to get on the ele like the elevator doors closed mm. and chop the head of the old shit off, and it rolled down my leg. <laughs> Thank God it was solid. <laughs> oh. End of story. Yeah, because if it wasn't, <laughs> then you would have felt silly. Yeah, it would have felt really bad to post that one piece rolling down my leg. Rolling, rolling, yeah. rolling. I would hold in shits for hours. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. I'll shit anywhere. Yeah, I wish you'll, I had. You'll shit anywhere, right, Joe? Come on. You're yeah. not that crazy with your germs, are you? Uh, yeah, I think you just got to own it sometimes. Like, uh, it's, it's. I don't mean in your pants. I'm just saying there's, there's people around here that have to go home to take take a dump. And I'll I'll go to the Port Authority bathrooms. I don't I'll care. I'll shit if I have oh, to, but I try not I've to. done subway yeah. bathrooms. I've done Penn Station bathrooms. I'm proud. He's gotten laid a lot. I'm, pr <laughs> oh, I'm proud. Yeah, all those, oh, those Penn Station. If, if it's stainless steel. It's it's not a good place. That's a great point. Yeah, stainless steel does not equal. It's a prison or a fucking a subway or a, a bus stop. Yeah, they know people are gonna take their anger out on their uh, toilets, right? Port yeah. Authority is still just so shitty too. It's but, just such the, a shitty place. The whole building is so terrible. You can't just like if you want to go to the first floor to the third floor, you walk up one flight of stairs. Then you have to walk to a separate wing to get up another flight. There's no like staircase that goes the whole way up. It's like it's like over here and then over here. Why and would they watch you wandering around that place? I don't. I don't know. I think it saved space. But they do that in uh, you know uh, clothing stores and stuff because they want you to see stuff. Yeah. So yeah. they force you to walk all the way across to get to the next uh, escalator. Department that, stores and whatnot. That's a good, not at, not at the port no. authority. No one wants to be there longer than they have to. It's it's it was finished in 1950 and a lot's changed since then, so it's so woefully out of date. Wait, you take a lot of buses oh, out of yeah, there? Yeah, they call me the the bus king <laughs> down there. There he is, the bus king. They know you. Yeah, I'm, I'm there all the time because who calls you the bus king? <laughs> <laughs> all my friends down at the bus station. You, you know some of the people. What a terrible yeah. nickname. No, but like uh, what a terrible sentence. All my friends down at the bus station. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I spent a lot of time there. The Greyhound yeah. crew. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey guys. Everyone does. Crammed in, Mr. Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you taking buses? The up on Pond Express people. <laughs> but, but like, uh, you know, the waiting rooms, uh, the the where you where you wait for your bus, like they flow into each other. So because there's not enough space for the amount of people that are taking the buses, so you don't know what line you're getting into, and then people get mad. They're like, oh, you're cutting, and it's like, well, no, it's a, it's a it's an oval. I just got into the oval. No one knows what the heck's going on. But yeah, it's just like we were talking about uh, the public transportation. Either they haven't built any kind of tunnel under. The, the Hudson River in decades, so it's you know, there's all kind of bridges to the over the East River, but you've got the Lincoln Tunnel, the Holland, and the GW, and the Path Train, but there's no subway to Jersey. There's no, they really ought to just extend the path to Secaucus or something, or the Seven Train to Secaucus or something. Because right. too much money, too much money. But how, like, those projects cost way too much these days. If you did that, the real estate value would, would skyrocket. You'd imagine sure. you could make it up in taxes pretty quick. Well, that's a good, great point. The real estate would go through the roof. If the 7 train went to fucking... It, they're it, extending it to the west side now. No, yeah. It just went to like 34th Street or yeah. something. All, all, all the way like to 10th just, Avenue or 11th yeah. Avenue. So maybe their plan is to you know see how that goes and maybe keep going. Yeah. I don't know. If they, who pays for that, though? That's a lot of money. Lot, yeah. It's yeah. billions. Those projects are billions now. Yeah. Too bad. Uh, there was something. Oh, where do you take the buses to? Just gigs? Oh, uh, I take it in the city all the time. It's uh, oh, I see what you're real convenient. Yeah, oh, to and from. I what? used to have a day job too, so I'd have to. What go. did you do? I worked for Viacom and Human Resources. Oh my God, you were a Human Resources guy. <laughs> uh, well, I did mostly paperwork. What was the biggest complaint that would come through? 
people, it was uh, the biggest complaints always pay issues. You know, I didn't get paid this week, which makes perfect sense. People, you know, want to get paid. Oh, that makes, yeah. But how about like stuff like, you know, my boss told a joke he shouldn't have told or this guy was sexually harassing me or upskirts. I I was lucky not to have to deal with that. Um, I would have to deal with like, why do I have to bring my ID again, you know, to, to work, to, to work, you know, it's. Stuff like that. I was I was more of a paperwork guy. I didn't have to deal with uh, sexual harassment or uh, you know all the all the trouble. But when someone had. got fired, then you were taking care of the paperwork. Yo, oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I had to do that. <laughs> what? You didn't have to tell them. I did not have to tell them. I would be terrible at that. Some people like are like, yeah, I can do it. They're like, you know, veterans of v- Vietnam. Or something. They've seen it all. Like nothing phases them, but. To me, I, I'm just not good at talking to people like that. I, I don't like the confrontation. I don't like the... It's it's hard giving someone bad news. The only time I ever had to do anything like that was when we had a big layoff uh, right after the financial crisis. I had to tell people uh, they had to, like they had to go talk to human resources or and where where they had to go to talk to human resources. And uh, you know, most people were like, "Wow, this must suck for you." I'm like, "No, it, it's like this is." Much harder for them because they were losing their jobs at a terrible yeah. time to get a job. Uh, most people are really friendly when there's a a problem like that, which is great. Did you ever meet Sumner Redstone? I never did. The employee said he, he used to come by a lot, but uh, never when I was never when I was there. He's still going. I mean, that guy is ninety two or ninety three, yeah. something like that. Isn't he going through a divorce or something where there's like a couple of younger women fighting over his money or some breakup? Or much more interesting than Elon Musk. Uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, there's a there's a picture of him. 92. Uh, 92 years young. Yeah, there's, he likes you women. Like, his girlfriend's like 50 or 40 or so, 50. Yeah, he's uh, 50 yeah. years old, and uh, what? he this... talks openly about his sex life. I think he worked on the Enigma machine in World War II. He's a brilliant guy. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah, and he took a uh, Viacom, was a billboard company, and he took it into, you know, through merger and acquisitions, made it uh, an empire. I have, a, I have a problem with his stats. He's 92 years old, and he's still worth $5.1 billion. You would think if you made it to 92, you'd be worth maybe a, you leave about a million left at right. that point. Why Why would you still be worth 5.1 billion? Who knows how much he spent, though? Oh, that's a good point. You don't know how much he's going through. He may say to a girl, you know, hey, you're cute. Give me a jerk me off. I'll give you a hundred grand. <laughs> right. <until I> get <laughs> <nothing>. What? <laughs> jerk me off now. hundred grand. And he pulls and it cash. Out. Here it is. Yeah, well, there was a guy who was one of his drivers. Who was uh, t- doing interviews about him or something? I think it was a temporary driver. I read something. The guy like, which I don't like when people kind of come out and say that stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we got to have them sign non disclosures. Yeah, but um, very interesting to. He had some stories about him, huh? Yeah. Well, didn't Johnny Carson's lawyer? We interviewed him, Henry Bushkin. Oh, I thought. Wouldn't that be attorney client privilege? That's I what was, I wondered. Yes, it was so odd to me that Opie and Anthony weren't here that day. You guys are both out yeah. that day for whatever reason. I decided to do the show because I think one of you guys was taken off and one of you guys was... I don't remember. But I did it with someone and we interviewed Bushkin and then we had uh, Tom Arnold that day. Oh, wow. How was Bushkin? He was good. Tom Arnold was amazing. Yeah, we loved Tom That was the first Tom time Arnold. I ever interviewed Tom. But yeah, Henry Bushkin, I was surprised that he was able to tell that stuff too. Lawyer, lawyer. Here's how you know you're getting old. When your fucking tie goes nine inches beneath <laughs> your fucking pants. That's the sign oh, of age. Oh, my man. God. Why, why do you, you still color your hair at that age? Who gives a shit? Why don't you just point, put right? your pants lower? You're not fooling anybody. <laughs> yeah, why do we, uh, why do they pull their pants up so high? I, I don't know what happens to old people, oh. but you, when you, you look like a doddering fool. <laughs> Because he's going to hold in two hands. He's holding his hands with a security guy and this girl. He's a very powerful man, but he's getting up there now. When your, hand, you, when your hands are shiny, it's another sign that you're getting old. How yeah. do you buy pants that you can pull up that far? It's I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, go to that other video there. It's the world's tiniest shirt ever. <laughs> yeah, it's an awful shirt. It really is bad. Uh, what is this? Apartment oh, yeah. is flood. Uh, this is from the South Carolina flood coverage. Sure. Uh, they asked a woman about what she went back to save. Okay. Um, 
Totino's Pizza and her dog. Grab two pizzas and a dog? Two frozen pizzas and a dog. <laughs> she doesn't know if her house is going to be okay? She loves pizza. That's great product placement, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no kidding. The pizza must be really good. <laughs> or really bad. She figures she could float on them. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really a bad that's a sign that you don't have a lot of possessions. No. <laughs> what was the most valuable thing you have? Well, I love my dog, and then there's either my furniture, my photographs of my family, or the two frozen pizzas. <laughs> oh. I lie up for the pizzas. <laughs> She also named the pizzas before she did the dog. It went for two frozen pizzas and then the dog. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. The follow-up question. <laughs> follow-up question. Do you have any more dogs in there? <laughs> That's true. And do you have any children in there? Yeah. I forgot my baby. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know what I'd say if I had to... I well, she just it. lost everything, and she's probably not thinking straight, and they throw a camera in her face. That's true. And it's... What's what's worth saving in the end? My signed picture with Black Sabbath is the most important. Thing. That's what you would grab. Yeah, I think so. Well, my Richard Pryor autograph. I can't uh, think of one thing good. I would actually want to grab. Or my Kinnison autograph. That's good. Too. Oh that's wow, good that's too. did you you got them personally? Yeah, I met Pryor once, um, and I met Kinnison once when I was doing open mics in 1990. Wow, Kinnison would do the big room at Rascals. And uh, it was a comedy club in New Jersey, and we would do the bar out, like in the, attached to the big room. We did the old mic. It was Tuesday night, and Sam was doing the big room, and the owner brought him out, and he talked to like three or four of us. And uh, I got an autograph from me, and I got on a napkin, and I got one from my buddy Tyler, who I think came to the show with me. I don't remember, but uh, yeah, he just wrote uh, Jim, and then he wrote like a scream out. And then he signed it. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. I get Carlin. I believe Carlin. Yeah, he's mm. dead now, too. He filmed one of his HBO specials. I was in the audience. And I lied. I, I hadn't done comedy. This is like 1989. And I told the guy about... Because I wanted to be a comedian, so I told the guy, one of his guys... I'm like, I want to meet George. Are you going to come out? And he goes, no. I'm like, well, can I come back and meet him? He's like, no. And I'm like, well, I'm a comedian. And he's like, come on. And he took wow. me back. Wow. That's pretty cool. And I lied, and I got to meet him, and he was really nice. Oh, that's that's really cool. Yeah. I, I want to show my, uh, my Sam Kinison picture. Yeah, Opie took a picture, actually. Way back in the day. Yeah. That's like, Opie was doing ads for women's sweaters literally... back then. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, it was the Cosby awesome. years. Yeah. yeah. I was just starting in radio. I, was, I don't even think I was 20, How maybe 22. How book, Brother Sam? Do you know? Cause I, heard I didn't it, read it. Uh, his brother Bill wrote it, and I, I've heard that... It's, a, it's an amazing read. It's an amazing book, but I've heard later that a lot of it was made up. Like what part? Really? I yeah, love that book. Because his friend, what's the name of the guy? Carl LeBeau. Carl LeBeau, and the interview said a lot of it was just bullshit. Like what was bullshit? I don't know. That's I have no idea, but I think uh, just a lot of the stories were just Did fabricated you, or... You, you hear you the know. Carl LeBeau story? What? Like Carla Bo oh, about raised the, a kid. The kid, yeah. And it turns out it was Sam Kinison's the whole time. Swing, yeah. And he had to pay still. And then he was trying to say, "Hey, man, I don't want to pay anymore. I still, I still love her as my own, but it, this cost me a fortune." And it turns out, you know, I'm not the biological father. So he was trying to get a break, I think, on the child support. But supposedly that story is as true as it gets. There was that legendary story about Kinison. And he didn't. He didn't know. Sorry. Do you remember that book? The story where he. Uh, he would swing, his wife and he would swing, and he fucked the guy's, some other guy's wife, and he came instantly, and he just had to listen to a guy fuck his wife in the other room for like five hours. Oh, oh my God. no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, That's the worst. How embarrassing. Uh, and you want to just call it off? Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, let's. After five minutes. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> guy's just getting a good use out of your wife. He's fucking getting a real, getting his money's worth. <laughs> he won't come. You guy's, almost done in there, honey? <laughs> guy's sticking in her ass, and he just keeps going. He just can't get it. Done. He's one of those guys that can just keep going. Going after he comes, <laughs> my buddy growing up was like that. He said he would fuck and then just keep going for a second one. Wow, wow. his dick wouldn't go soft. That's for the young Joe. That's why you got to get in there sooner than later. You're That's gonna, true. You're gonna lose a lot of tricks. Yeah. yeah, your dick is gonna be a fucking piece of wilted macaroni by the time you get <laughs> by the to time use you it. do it. You're still young enough. You can get six or seven done in one night, Joe. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. So what else did you do besides Viacom? Uh, I worked at a supermarket. Uh, that's that's a brutal. Place to work. The margins are so low, and you're just constantly dealing with customers that are unhappy because it's your know, food. How hard goes, is it to be? Uh, I mean, it's a supermarket. Well, you want food. I've never been unhappy. Every once in a while, you get something like, ah, I gotta well, bring like this back. But say you don't have enough cashiers on 
I like it. Right. They play. Okay. They they're like, you guys need to open up more stuff. I'm like, I'm the cashier. <laughs> I don't I don't make those decisions. You know. That's like when comics yell at the crowd for being small, and there's like the people that came out. They're like, yeah, we don't fucking know. Yeah, exactly. we're, we're the good people. Like, yeah, yeah, we we came to see you. Yeah, it's go it's, find those people. They you might be the, outside somewhere. You don't know the price of something. There's sixty thousand things that change price every week, and I don't. How could you possibly know the price? It's just. Anything that people can complain about, they do, and you're so you interact with the customers so much when you're working in a supermarket because they have to, you know, you have to talk to them at the end. Where it's like a lot of jobs, you don't you don't see the customer that much or as many customers as you see. So it's a oh, it's a brutal job and it's tough to get. Did you like when they would come up with with coupons? Uh, I didn't mind, but there was there's you know those coupon they call them ex- extreme couponers. And a oh, lot of them, yeah. they started to come around our store, and they had a system. They'd go to the new, the new cashier, and they would take coupons for, um, they were for a larger size, and they would try to use it for a smaller size. Oh, and, Joe! And it was just, it was just a big, uh, it was a big to do. And yeah, it's, it's a regular Danny Ocean right there. Oh yeah, yeah. my God Almighty! What's next? Oh, if it, it's, uh, it, t- it's a tough job, and I did it many years ago in, in Shoprite or Stop and Shop, but I don't remember it. I hated it. You were a cashier. Yeah, yeah. Bradley's did too. not know that. And now they got the the robot machines, the the use self, the self scanning machines. So huge fan, Joe. Mm, love them. I, I like them too. Self um, checkout is the greatest invention ever. Don't have to deal with all that nonsense with the cashiers that are forced to ask all those questions. It, it's quicker too because usually the you know the people go with the big the big orders to the cashiers, but sometimes they don't even have anybody working <laughs> enough people working at the self scanning machines. Uh, I find, but I don't know. I just love hearing that noise. Just scanning yeah. your stu- stuff. It's all nice. Because you know it's getting done. Okay, everything's getting done. I like doing those, too. I'm in, and I'm fucking out. Love them. Eventually, yeah. stores will have no employees in them. It'll just be you. And there'll be a machine you can talk to. Yeah. But then how do you get out of the store? Maybe you got to prove, um, I don't know. You just walk out. They'll all be scanned. Everything will be scanned. It'll know if you pay Maybe for you it. sneak an orange or two in your bag. How would they know that on the way out? Maybe the weight of things. It's yeah. probably It's probably worth the... Not having to pay all those employees here. So you, they'll, you t- they'll let you take an orange every once in a while. How many oranges can you get in your pocket? Not that many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would rather have somebody steal an orange a day than fucking, you know, pay health insurance. Yeah. Somebody yeah. who smokes. Well, I, I think we did it, guys. Joe Mackey, uh, really a pleasure to meet you, finally. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Great first appearance. We'd love to have you back. Definitely. Uh, you're going to be in Seattle this weekend? Yep. Uh, parlor at uh, in the Bellevue. Anything else you want to promote? Uh, no, that should, I think we're good. Now, go see this show I'm doing for Sam's uh, release uh, album release party at the Village Underground. October 13th. Uh, October 13th. 13th. That's 8.30 be... p.m. A lot of good comics nice. on it. That's a, a week from today. Yeah. And what else, Sammy? I got the album coming out on October 23rd. It's called special. Class Act. And my special is Comedy Central, uh, midnight on October 24th, Saturday night. So tune in. Do you think the Knicks have a shot? Do, do you, are no, you just wearing the shirt? Or no, I like I like the teams. Yeah, I still root for the Knicks, but no, they're, they're where are you at with Carmelo Anthony? I'm not a huge fan of his, but I'm not I mean, either. he's a huge talent, but he's but he he's not a team to, player. Thank you, and that's what wins championships. That, a, when Jordan figured that out, that's when he started winning everything. Everyone also, knows that. Yeah. Also, he Jordan dropped his points great down. Defense. I, I, I don't. He's not my type of guy, really. But I'm a big Charles Oakley guy. I mm. loved Oakley. Oh, Oakley oh, that team was the shit. They were. They should have won something, don't you think? Oh, it hurts. They can't yeah, it hurts. Thing about fuck. Ewing, the fact that Ewing didn't get one is is a shame because he was so great. But so that means his whole career was a waste of time. I don't think so. Good actor. <laughs> you got in the Exorcist Part Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're a superstar athlete, you, you come away with nothing. I I feel like it's, it almost, it's pretty much a waste of well, time. It's like Dan Marino. It's just it just sucks because like it sucks for a guy like Dan Marino like commentating these games or like he's got to like talk about who's better and it's all based on rings and he knows he didn't get a ring and we all know you know he's a great player but it's what? the first thing everyone says it's like not the 50,000 yards it's a, he didn't win any Super Bowls it's like, yeah. oh, and it's, all- a lot of it's you know your team I mean it's yeah. a team game it's not like you know you ever hear a Mark Duper no <laughs> ah, the, the receiver yes right? he was right. one of the Marx brothers Mark Clayton Mark Duper Oh, I was just kidding. They, right. they called them uh, the Marx Brothers? Yes, they did. Both named Mark. <laughs> uh, and Sam, obviously, we love you on the show as well. Thank Jim Norton is going to be at the Improv in Irvine, California this weekend, starting Thursday night. Yeah, anybody who's interested has probably got tickets already, so I'm just being redundant at this point. But <laughs> So I'll see all 40 of you there. 
<laughs> no, and it's going to do very well. And I guess that's it. We'll see anything we need to promote. Who's on tonight? Uh, Rich and Bonnie, right? Rich yep. and Bonnie. My wife hates me uh, tonight on this channel live at 7 p.m. And then, of course, Sam, Sam Roberts on at 9 o'clock. So yes. keep, keep listening to the channel throughout the day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, Thank bye. you.